No fighting. No confrontations. We're just going to say we get there. Wait, no, this is chaotic calling streaming. Screw that noise. You're going to have a whole bunch of shit go wrong. Anyway, I'm the DM Starwin, and I'm about to take these adventures through Tynak Kingdom. Joining us are Bar Willowhall, the halfling mastermind. Hey. Hello. Okay, I thought I was going to have to mimic your voice there. Gideon Metal Lake, the halfling barbarian. Hello. Then we have Ryder, the halfling druid of the circle of forestry. Hi, Lo. Protect the forest. So, last week, our small group was sorting out details on what to do next. Visser, who has been separated from his scythe, seems to be down in the dumps at first glance. Though concerned, the group starts sorting out what should happen for the company next. <coughs> Excuse me. Turning in all the available events they completed, Shadow's Guild's carriage delivery, Guild note for that delivery. Smithersmond's mineral he was seeking. Sprigget's plants. The group had a bit more success and setbacks since the Shadows kept the pay from their jobs for compensation for clearing a paper trail in Smith Monica. A new job from the Shadows was brought to light which would cause the group to return to Smith Monica. Hooray! And plant evidence at a blacksmith's house that works for Helmerhammers. A deep blow has been made and a power struggle needing resolving is assumed to be complete with the implication of this blacksmith. Visser's condition continued to worsen as he passes out and barely breathing at the table after eating. The halflings fashion a way to transport him to the clergy and for a bit of negotiating going back and forth trying to get this one stubborn clergyman to take a look at him, they found out Visser was suffering from what is known as spirit reflux. A disease or a curse or even worse that's related to the soul being tied to a divine object or ritual and getting torn or manipulated from its original being after segregation. One other victim of such curse was known ten years ago by a mage we all know, Tierra Light Mage. The Seth Cure was a ritual brew of a potion made with the very rare flower known as the Rose Monarch. With the season being as it is, it's suspected the only real way to get one is to hope that a trade center in town can find it in stock in a foreign trade caravan that delivers to the kingdom. With that knowledge, they prepay for the order, 80 now, 20 when it gets here, and the order is accepted and now they are left to wait on that ordeal. They still have a mission on their own to take care of, and now they find themselves the next day setting out on the open roads towards Smith Monica once more. Woohoo, nothing could go wrong. Along the way, they find a group of bandits. Okay, that could go wrong. Raiding a family's carriage. Taken to the side and tied up with a crying girl holding on to them, the raiders continue to secure the carriage till our brave adventurers showed up. Is brave the right word? I don't know. Quickly splicing through the group they managed to corral the last remaining three bandits as they gave up knowing now they were no match for their captures. Gideon suggests they start working for them. Is that right? Start working for them to keep for their keep and they are now to work for him as intentions of putting together an official fight pit. I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I wrote that. But basically you guys wanted to recruit these remaining bandits to create your official fight pit circuit in Shandora and as that starts to come together and that was another thing you guys were working on is coming up with this fight pit plan which our our uh, keeper Shisha was supportive of so I'm sure she's snooping out ways to get that situated so I'm gonna move us back to the bandit map for a moment I can see Shisha jumping in on this Oh yeah, she might even participate, you never know. But now we are back with the bandits. You have them kind of corralled here in this little situation. And that one dead one over there off to the left is where the family was tied up. I think Ryder said he freed them, is that right? Yes, yes I freed them. Alright, so they're free, they got their little girl and their... You guys put horses back in their carriage. Uh, I suppose you have nothing else to say to them, right? As far as I know, we left off with us on the way to Smoth Monica and me holding a sword to him while they're in the back of the carriage. All right, is that where we went? Well, we were talking about having them take us to the camp they had been using so they could collect any things they oh, yeah. Yeah, didn't intend to leave. Camp. All right, I will say for the sake of this, because from what I recall, it's like you just basically got them corralled, you freed the family, 
you put two new horses on their carriage, and then they were free to oh, go. Oh, I told the family they saw nothing, but there was no dice roll associated with that. Oh, well, let's make a dice roll happen. How, you want to roll persuasion or intimidation? I'll let you choose. Uh, and I'll let you choose whoever helps you, or if they should make the roll. I mean, I'm proficient in intimidation. Yep. I can do it persuasion. <laughs> How about you do intimidation and he does persuasion? We'll do that. And then we'll take the highs. That way it's kind of like both of you are talking to this family. <laughs> they're terrified! Yeah, they're kind of scared of this little halfling who basically raped through these freaking bandits with no problem whatsoever. And then you're like, you're like, you saw nothing, and Bar's over there. Yeah, you, you didn't, you didn't you, it's, see, see Eddie. That you know, he's kind of like, well, he already set the tone. It kind of threw Bar off as he tried to explain it to that point. And the family's like, yeah, yeah, and they're trying to rush away from you now. So with them out of the way, you got these three bandits. Do you tie them up or anything, or do you just tell them to get in the back? Uh, I mean, what's the situation? I'm not trying to give you. I ideas. mean. I think they agreed to work with us. Yeah, no, uh, we, we kind of, we got the agreement, you know, we'll go with you. Yeah, I'm yeah. just, all right, so just, you're not going to, so, you're not, you're not. You guys need to get anything? Well, we, yeah, we got a few more horses over there. I mean, we gave them the guys who you killed, like my brother, his horse. We don't really have a camp around here. We've just been trying to find a place to park for the night and thought we could raid these family for some food. At the mention of food, I do happen to have a respectable number of rations because I'm eating for four now. Mm -hmm. Considering I just picked up three minions. Mm -hmm. So I will distribute a day's worth of rations to the three of them just as a start. All right, so these three get on the back of your wagon. You get them situated. He tells you the sob story, and you just start handing over rations for them, and they're like, thanks. You know, kind of taken back by it, you know, but at the same time, you can still see... Make an insight check. We'll see how well you're looking at them. Whoever wants to make it, as this is everybody's... I'll be making you know, it because these, well, these are my new friends. Yeah, and I would hope that the rest of you would be like, I want to know what these guys are thinking. I believe them. Yeah, you made new buddies, man. Here's some food. Chill. And you think, oh, yeah, they like me now. I'm handing them food. No problems whatsoever. Eh, they're okay. Bar, you get the feeling like, even though they're being genuinely pleased and accepting of the gift, you can't help but feel like the bandit leader still holds a bunch of animosity against, you know, Gideon for killing his brother. Yeah, I know, and I'm not letting my sword sleep. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's basically all you can get there. But, with the bandits fed, uh, the situation resolved, uh, you are free to continue wherever you want. Like they said, they have no distinct camp. They were fixing to find a place to lay down whenever they got there, but for now, this was like a roaming group of bandits who just haven't found a place to stay yet. What do you guys want to do? They... I'll take it. Uh, you treat Gideon fair, Gideon treat you fair. Because, you know, I believe him. Yeah. And what do you want to say, Ryder? I wanted to ask if they had any, like, you know, like, anything bad in Smathlonica, like anyone was looking for them and whatnot. Probably, but well, I'm going to take care of that. Well, making that small talk, he's like, <laughs> you know, you never know. Like, there might have been some people we aggravated along the road who might have reported to Smith I mean, after all, that is where one of the main jails are. I'm making insight check uh, again, Ryder, since you asked the question. Do you see a Let nervous? Do you see a nervous twitch from the bandit leader, and you get the sense that he must have been there at least once or twice. Hmm. That might be a problem. Not saying that out loud. Just thinking to myself. No, I see. See, no worry about jail. Gideon have plan. Alright. And with that, you guys can go ahead and continue about your day. Um, so, with these bandits in the back, 
I rolled up some previous events here and we'll see if any of this happens. But you guys managed to go ahead and start trolling along the main road heading towards yeah. the crossroads. Um, you never gave me control of Pat's the token ever, by the way. Did I not? Um, give me a second. I might be able to do something with that. Uh, I'll ritual cast speak with animals and keep making sure that Charlene is okay. That was a little bit traumatic for a horse. No, so you're going to talk to the horses a bit as you guys are starting off. Uh, you can see Charlie. Nothing see like that, yeah. Sorry. Nothing. I was trying to remember what the other horse's name. I know it was Charlene, right? And was it Fred Charlene? and Charlene. Fred and yeah, Charlene. Fred and Charlene. Yeah. yeah, Fred and Charlene, yeah. Wrote it somewhere. I don't know where it is at the moment, but yeah. So Fred's like, um, you healed her up. We're doing better. I'm sorry she got hit. It should have been me. And he's just being sympathetic towards her, kind of nuzzling up against her every now and then. And she's just kind of solemnly continuing because she's just a horse. So she's just doing whatever it takes to get it off her mind. Charlene does not speak much, but you can hear Fred being concerned as he's like constantly saying, it should have been me. She shouldn't have had to take that shot. That should have been me. You know, he's like, that should have been me. That's about all you can get out of him. I'm just like, it shouldn't have been any of you. If anything, it should have been Gideon. Because he can take it. I don't think they could have done that. <laughs> I do believe we saw them try before we went into the forest. But at any rate. Yeah, so basically now you guys are back on the road. Uh, is there anything else you want to do as you're having this little conversation piece going around? Like, is there anything else that needs to be said to each other? Or to the mm -hmm. captors? It was the captain that we left alive that shot Charlene, wasn't it? No, you killed Or was it someone else? You killed him. Oh, okay, good. Actually, I think, they <laughs> I, mean... both took, I think they both took shots, to be quite honest. I think they both did initial <laughs> dagger throws, and then the one on the right was forced into a fighting stance with the rest. So he might have been halfway responsible for the damage, but he never killed it. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh... On our journey, I'm going to use up the uh, last of my aprons and gloves and crap. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea how this will turn out quite yet. So we're going to do a... But I'm going to make them masks in a similar vein of mine. Huh. Then how about you make me one of them checks uh do you have I've, been, I've been rolling decks because I've used the crystal of the decks. Yeah, I think soon we're going to give you so. like, proficiency in leather working tools. But, uh. Wow, I can't well, find the page. So I'll need three checks for three masks, I assume. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm looking for the. I got a lot of stuff here. I'll put this. Maybe that'll find it. There it is. Okay. Had to find the actual page here. So I will pull up the sheet. And I'll go ahead and make that. So three decks check. You make one really good one. The other two kind of turn out a little shabby. So you might not even want to be using those. Like the holes where the eyes is. It kind of bleeds over to where the nose starts. And then the mouthpiece kind of comes up to the other right eye. On both of those masks. So you kind of botch those up. So those materials are officially used. Go ahead and take them off. And I did. You only made one me. mask that was successfully useful. Uh, what was the shape of this mask? Like, what did you want it to look like, exactly? Uh, for the leader dude, I was going to give him... The the first one I did was going to be, like, a lion's mask. Lion? Try to give him a, like... You can be brave. Alright, so he'll take that. And what I will do here is give you some points for at least... So you had one good success and then two shitty ones, so that puts you at about... Well, they're average. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't fanatical. Like, uh, you still gain XP. Don't oh, worry. Uh, but yeah, so. Yeah. Okay, I can move Pat's too now, sweet. Yeah, and so all of those um, materials that you try to use are used up now. Yes. Alright. But, um, put it in your inventory if you don't mind. Like, it doesn't even have to be in the actual inventory, but like. Yeah, I'll put them uh, in the bio in, section. Yeah, in a box or something saying that the captain of the bandits that you recruited has a mask of whatever you've made there, of a lion in this case. So there you go. 
and the captain receives the mask and he's like w what's this for you know, well if you wear a mask the guard not recognize you work for Gideon he... and yeah you know, I'm wearing my mask as we stand it's been heavily patched yeah yeah he's like if you know if they will recognize you by that yeah, he's like, oh, well, hey, yeah, that, that that actually makes sense. And he starts to put it on. And he's like, how do I look? Hey, that was a 21. I'm very happy with like, it. turned yeah, out I exactly mean, as I ma envisioned. That mask turned out fine, but the other two just kind of botched. But, yeah, there you go. You got him dressed up in a lion mask. So. I'll, I mean, I'll give the other two to them, you know, they can fiddle with, you know, cutting a part of it off so it's not covering their eye. Yeah, they... And it'll just be like a lower face mask, I guess, at that point. Basically, what they, wind up, what they wind up having to do is, like, cut a bigger hole, so it's kind of like a hood instead of a mask. But they still make it to where it will cover most of their face, so their mouth and lower part of their face features are sticking out but they try to like cloak it gonna, on theirs are going to be more dog like but it didn't work out too well yeah so that didn't work out well but they try to make shift whatever you got there it's like well this is better than nothing I suppose um, but yeah you guys have all these guys grouped up you're in the carriage playing with the crystal um, anything else you want to do on the trail As we get did to we the... ever ask them their names no you have not we did no I mean that making masks for him. I was going to write names on them. That'd be stupid, put a name on the mask. Well, it wouldn't hurt to have names for him, I guess. No, uh, that was... I wasn't going to write their names on the mask, though. Mm, yeah, but nobody asked their names as of yet. And they haven't been forthright given them. Yeah, we only know the brother's name. He started with a T, and he's dead now. Yeah, he pretty much came useless. Well, have a conversation, guys. What do you want to know? So, what do you three call yourselves? I'll call back from the front of the carriage. The cart. What we call ourselves? What do you mean? Like a group name or something? Uh, just a bunch Not of names. Names. Just normal names. Yeah. Well, the first band is like, my name's Jim. The second band is Chudson. He's like, my name's Leroy. And the leader's like, I'm known as Maxwell. First one was Jim? Yep. Matter of fact, okay. I just made this handout for my own. But I can put it out there for you too if you want to see what I wrote. You got Jim, Leroy, and Maxwell. Maxwell's the leader. Well, we figured that out. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for them to ask my name, just like, but Gideon's already say his name many times. Yeah, they're like, not really... Like they haven't showed genuine interest in asking back, but then they're like, Maxwell's like, uh, yeah, and what do they call you guys? What should we call you, boss? Gideon tell you Gideon's name. So we know Gideon you're Gideon. Gideon's actually many times. So we know you're Gideon, so who are your companions with you then? Bar. Say, unless Bar shuts me up, I'm just going to say, that Bar... And that rider. Yeah, so bar and rider. They like. I guess as long as you keep us fed and give us honest work, we have no reason to be bandits anymore. So, in a way, I guess this was a good thing, still losing half our friends and family. You have to understand, there's still a little bit of struggle inside to deal with. In our defense, you try to kill us first. Fair, that is very fair, but still doesn't change the fact that we misjudged the challenge. And that, too, is our fault. I don't know if he's actually saying a bright side in this or not. Well, or if he's just saying stuff. Yeah, make, make an insight on that, if you would. 
He already did. did. Oh, he yeah, did. That's what that was for. I'm sorry, I wasn't on that screen. I turned back to it. Yeah, and maybe he's just saying it to be saying it, but he's like that's he's trying to look at the bright side of it because you're trying to say like, hey, this is what happened because you did it. But at the same time, it's like you can't help but know that he's still struggling because, you know, you, these guys must have had better luck with lesser people. They didn't know they were messing with season adventures when you showed up because they're still taken back by the size of the three of you and the fact that one of you was <laughs> able to just to come in and just kind of like, what is that? Uh, what's that video game where it's very old where like the guy has a mining pick and he's just doing the pick thing and he's coming forward and just chipping through everything can't remember it's dig dug dug yeah something like that yeah so it's like you just pretty much dig dug through all of the men and then when they were like devastated it's like we give up <laughs> and you guys have mercy so it's like he's dealing with the fact that this midget came through and nearly killed all of them in that yeah i still manner. summoned lightning okay it looked impressive it yeah, they lived through your lightning. They did not live through a pickaxe through the head, I'm afraid. So, I'm afraid. They were more scared of the My actual dear. physical damage that showed up instead of the licks that kind of tapped across their body for a moment. My damage rolls were so bad, don't judge. We were not. You're the one judging. Okay, yeah, you're right. I mean, I wasn't going to bring it up, but as far as threats went, Gideon was far more threatening, I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, as you're yeah, traveling along, I do have along. a plan because it's a multi-day journey to Smith yeah. Because yeah. we're not in the Yeah, it's part. gonna be. It's gonna be. Yeah, it's gonna be at least two to three days, perhaps, or two, I believe. So for this, as you're traveling along, it's still kind of mid-afternoonish. Uh, let's get a perception check. Whoever's keeping watch, and I'll allow advantage if anybody's kind of assisting. Like the driver can assist the active perceiver who wants to perceive. Yeah, I'll assist, but. Yeah, I'll, I'll look around. All right, so go ahead and make your perception check. Bar is probably laser eyeing the bandits to make sure they don't do anything. I can look everywhere. All right, that so, is true. You do have your thing. Yeah, yeah. So right now, Ryder's driving a carriage, but he's keeping an eye out, and then Gideon is on his pats and wandering around the carriage, just keeping an eye. So yeah, go ahead and make the rollwood advantage there, uh, Gideon. The nat twenty save. You look on the side of the road, and there's a set of shackles just laying there on the ground as you kind of make your way part way through. Uh, nothing else seems to be around other than like a, a straight, tr you know, there's a couple of trees along the road, some bushes off to the side, but right there at the side of the road, you see this shackle, and it's like half of it's showing and half of it's like in the middle of the bush. As much as I hate chains, I'm going to... This actually rolls in really well to a plan I had. I'm going to grab those. Well, it's Bar who... Oh, wait, no. It no, was Gideon. Gideon, oh, Gideon, yeah. Yeah. All right, so Gideon, you you see these shackles and everything. And you tug on it for a moment because the other shackle seems to be stuck on a limb inside the bush. But, you know, you're, it breaks off, and then you got the whole shackle. Uh, make an investigation on the shackles, if you don't mind. You, you've been in shackles before, sadly, and you know a good set of shackles from a bad set. And this set that you're looking at, the lock itself, where it like clips together, has been kind of shattered. Like something sharp went through it and chipped it open. Uh, Ryder, about this time, you you catch up to where Gideon's just kind of like off to the side of the road with Pats, and you're just about to pass him. I mean, you could stop the cart. Or have a conversation, whatever you want to do. I'll be looking at this as I, once I have a hold of them, I'll continue going on, you know, with the sh with the cart. Like I'm not stopping to, you know, play twenty questions with the shackles. All right. So you grab the shackles. You got them in your possessions. They're kind of beat up. The rider, you notice him bending down to grab something, and then he kind of gets back on the pats. And what, what is that you found? Gideon found chains. Chains should not be in out here. Mm -hmm. And, like, hearing the word chains over his shoulder, Maxwell just kind of shudders a bit, and the other two bands like, uh. As you continue moving 
further forward, unless there's anything else you want to do. Um, Could I look around for signs of someone being, you know, like running through here, other than, well, Gideon? Are you going to get out of the carriage to look, or are you going to stay on the carriage? I'll tell the horses to be like, hey, slow down for a minute, but don't stop, and now run off the carriage while it's still, you know, going. All right, so you're kind, of, you're kind of slowing down the pace so you can get a good look. I'll let you make a straight perception check. Okay. I don't want to full on stop the carriage, so uh, that's a six. Yeah, the bushes, the trees look only disturbed because Gideon might pull that shackle out, but you can't make out any difference. Just kind of blind mm. to whatever might have, you know, whatever left it there. Alright. Uh, so. I'll double move my way back to the moving carriage and take my seat back at the front. Alright. So, yeah. As you go further up the road, um, I would say, like, at the crest of a hill that's about 150 feet away from you, you can see an overturned carriage and a couple characters. A couple of humanoid figures from the shadowy aspect of where they're at, kind of overlooking this carriage. Everyone sees that? Yeah, especially you. Is this Say y'all? Say do, again? Do you know these people? Um, I'm going to be asking the uh, bandits, do you know them? No, they kind of squint their eyes and, hold on, let me make a perception check as a bandit. Uh, we'll let Maxwell do it since he's probably better at this. Maybe not. Uh, those look like royal guards up there. Is that plate mail they're wearing? I can't. They're in the sunlight a little bit. Can't quite make it out. Like they're casting a shadow from the top of this hill. If they ask questions, you guys work for me, and we do traveling fight pit stuff. Aye, uh, sir. You know, put on shows. Because that's the plan. Just act calm, and everything will be okay. Alright, so you guys just continue like nothing happened, or was there anything you want to do? Uh, we're going to continue until we get yeah. up there if yeah. something happens. Yeah, and as you get closer, the carriage looks like it has bars on the windows. Not like a, like wooden bars or anything. They look like they're metal bars inlaid into it. And this carriage has been like tilted over. The horses have been released from it. And yeah, it just... These two royal guards are just kind of going over the carriage. One of them just kind of steps out looking at you guys approaching. And he kind of waves a hand for you to stop for a moment. He's not being rude or anything, but he's like, Oh, can you hold a second? Yeah, I'll, I'll pull in the rain and stop the carriage. Uh, you guys wouldn't happen to see any any people trying to dash away from here or anything, have you? The guys in the back kind of freeze up, but... Okay. The only people we see Gideon. today were the people that were ahead of us on the trail. Looked like they were a family. Yeah, they seemed a little frantic, but we went ahead and let them pass. They looked like they were in a hurry to get home. But, um... You ain't seen nobody. You guys need help riding it? No, we're waiting for another part of our caravan to catch up. We were just sent here to investigate. Uh, um, by riding it, I meant you know, pulling it upright. Oh, well. No, we better not disturb it. We got some guys coming, though. Thank you. And we're going to leave it like this so we can crime scene, you know. Let the investigators take a better look at it. Make sure we didn't mess with anything. So you didn't see anybody, though, right? Uh, nobody of importance. Only carriage was always family. In in Halfling, I'll say, should we tell them about the uh, those things you found? You saw me pick something up. You didn't see what the thing was. I thought you said you got chains or something. I found chains, but they could be any kind of chains. Chains yeah. is a very fluid so, noun. Yeah, so right, I right. doesn't fully know what he got. Only Gideon knows. Ah, uh, well, damn it. It's a shame. Um, and you can hear them kind of... Uh, go ahead and go. I mean, 
we'll deal with this in our time. Um, you guys have a nice day. And it kind of goes back you over too. to you. Yeah. And if you want to make a perception check to catch what they're talking about between themselves as you're going away, you may do so. Otherwise, we can continue with the adventure. And I'll, I'll try to catch an ear as we go past since I can, you know, move around a little bit in range of the carriage and not seem suspicious. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And getting as you're getting on Pats and you're kind of the closer to him, you can hear him saying, looks like this carriage has been like this for a day or so. I mean, I know we've been expecting it, but... And then about that time, you guys kind of continue to trail off. This is a fucking godsend for my plan. I am so happy this happened. <laughs> I, rolled, uh, I rolled these out, so yeah. Nothing, nothing planned on my end. Just some extra stuff we're going to have happening. So I got this big old table I've been playing with, so... Look forward to that kind of stuff, since this is going to be more of a traveling group compared to the other campaign. So yeah, after that little conflict, or whatever you want to call it, a confrontation with these royal guards who are messing with a turned-over carriage, uh, you continue down the road. Uh, if there's anything else you want to do while you're having a conversation leaving this scene, you can. Uh, otherwise, for the most part... Uh, I mean, see... I'll really at a bar at Halfling, you know, what I heard, you know. <laughs> they say it's been like that for a day. Okay. All right. So continuing on, it is about four in the afternoon. Um, the guys in the back are just kind of antsy and it's like, so where exactly are we going right now? I mean, I don't know if we talked about location. Right now we go to Smith Monica. <laughs> why why do we got to go back there? Jim says in the back. Because that's where a job takes. Calm down, Trust Jim. Me. This is a job now. Go ahead, Ryder. We, I don't, I'm not very happy to be going back there myself. The Ryder got to visit the jail. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like, <laughs> look down and, uh, Oh. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So, yeah, the captain looks at your wrist and says, where'd you get that at? My wrist? Yeah, your wrist. Remember, you got a metal thing on your wrist? This is from a friend. Help me out. I'll help him out probably in the future. Those things are like shackle looking, though. That's eh, fine. It's just a bracelet. So, I'm, I'm gonna sort of, you know, like have pads come along with us and I'm gonna jump onto the carriage itself. Yeah. So that not shackle looking, the shackle looking and Gideon have yeah. clue. <laughs> Crikey. Look at those chains. Looks Gideon like... no like shackles more than you. Gideon been in jail. Um bar. You kinda cause you're looking everywhere. You can see these shackles plain as day, and you definitely notice there's like a lot of scratch marks leading to where the locks are, and then they're just kind of shattered into it. Like the lock seems to be shattered straight through. Can I, uh. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, no, you. Can... I think I know what happened. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna roll an intelligence to think I know what. Yeah, okay, somebody so... lockpicked us with a fucking knife or something. I was, I, was just, I was going to assume that they just broke it up against the uh, the rock. Yeah, in some way. In, yeah, well, in some certain way, they found a way to jam something into it and, like, beat these shackles off. But, yeah, I mean, as far as how they did it, all you know is that these shackles have been not unlocked by a key, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah. You have those shackles in your possession. And these three are just kind of like, uh, yeah, I don't want to be back in any of those, uh, the other bandit says. Uh, that was Leroy. And Gideon have a clue that these shackles and your hesitance to go back mean you probably just got out. Um, Not all of us. I mean, I've been out for a while and I was waiting for these boys to get out. They've Leroy and Jim here just got out a month ago, and 
it's hard to make ends meet when your crew grows so yeah we kind of did the only thing we thought we knew how to do and that was to steal from whoever and take what we want out in the open roads where the guards can't get to us but so you've all been out for a couple months or at least a month yes I mean, you all seem quite formidable. Why didn't you think about, like, joining a guild or something? <laughs> screw the guilds, and these guys are like, yeah, screw the guilds. I kind of shrug. Yeah, they, they must have had a bad experience. I mean, my experience hasn't been too bad. I mean, I've met a couple really nice people, or as far as I know, they're nice people. It's not easy working for the guilds once you have a record. At any rate, That's why you don't work for guild. You join our company, and you be part of our fight ring. Circumvent the guild. Well, it's better than going around raiding. So you know we got us for that. So in a way, this is kind of a godsend. I just kind of wish these trails off. You can tell he's internally still dealing with the death of his brother and his other two friends. But, you know, can't avoid it. I really do want to feel remorse. I'd, like, you know, kill the dude's brother. I'd be pretty pissed if someone killed mine. But he... Yeah. He started it. Yeah. Like... <laughs> and they're not vocally, like, saying you should be ashamed of yourself or anything like that. They, like, they know. They're, like, distancing that thought from being spoken because it's, like, there's no point in mentioning it. But, you know, you could definitely tell it's still on their mind. It's basically what's going on here. So, yeah. But you guys continue on now. It's like 4 in the afternoon. We move along to about 5, 6. Uh, unless there's anything you need to interrupt me for, by all means, please do. And gets close to about... The sun's starting to set now. Uh, you think within about an hour or so you need to go ahead and find a place to make camp? Uh, Are we close to the crossroads? I would say the crossroads are still a little ways up, and you might actually be able to make a survival check to kind of figure this out. And I'll give you advantage right. since you're from this kingdom. Then we've just uh, made the turn ourselves not more than a few days ago, so this yeah, is still familiar. Yeah, the, yeah, but the speed is quite different. I would say, like, if you were to press the horses for about three hours, like two hours after sunset... And, I mean, it would be dark, but you would definitely be able to hit the crossroad camp if you were to press on for two extra hours. I don't want to press on too much, I mean, after what Charlene's gone through. Good, I was about to say in half thing. Gideon think best to camp away from others. Yeah. Alright, so, yeah, you get to about... Eight. Don't offer temptation where it's not needed. True. So, 7 o'clock rolls around, the sun is fully set, and it's starting to get dark 7 30 rolls around about eight o'clock you finally need to make a survival check to find a good camp uh who wants to make this check and if, are you getting any assistance oh no i mean i can make the check again just hopefully i roll better this time all right because so i was a seven i rolled that turn to a 14 so bar is helping you go ahead and make this roll with advantage Oh, that's better. You managed to point out, like, a grove-like area that you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've been kind of in this area once before. I think there's, like, a little encampment-like area that you can find. And it's got, like, a couple rocks to kind of barricade it from the road and in such a way. Um, but definitely, like, a little flat area where you can, like, pull the cart off to the side, start a campfire. You think you found a suitable spot to start camp. So, how do you guys want to proceed with camping? Who wants to take watches? Uh, tell me how we're doing all this, since you have three extra people in your party. Okay, first, they're setting up camp. No, I'll help all of you get support, and I'll help them set up camp, because I will I'll say, also see if I can't find a game trail and take one of them with me on a small hunt real quick to I would say you know, like, have fresh meat. See this spot I'm picking? It's kind of like this. Like, you got this rock here that's kind of blocking the road. You got this little open area here. And then trees that lead into a denser forest. So, I would say, like, you all kind of come over in this direction. 
I'll probably, uh, I'll say I can be first watch if you want. Halflings don't naturally have dark vision, do they? I don't know, look at your racial feats. I don't think so. No, we don't naturally get dark vision. Okay, I was gonna ask because I actually had dark vision prepared. Okay, so then no. I say you undo the horses and you kind of got the carriage up here between the rocks and the forest. And then uh, okay. you're all kind of gathered here. How do you want to proceed? I need to get just one of these. There we go. I mean, this is just for the sake of seeing the actual camp location. So, there you go. I would like to, you know, see if I can't find a, you know, small game trail or something. And I put think, a like, the fire should be, like, right here, you know, and have, like, a nice leave fire. Yeah, leave that there. That'll be the fire, then. Uh, you want to look for a game trail? Let me get a survival check from you. Uh, anybody want to help him? If he's looking for a game trail, I can definitely help him. All right, so go ahead and make it with advantage. Um, you see some trails that look like deer. There's definitely some rabbits that have been scooting around in this location. And there might be a bear in the neighborhood as you come across some bear dung along the way. So there are options of what, whatever you want to try to hunt. I'd want to go after the bear because... That, you know, that's my totem animal, and this would be like, you know, a feral contest to me versus totem animal. Alright. Uh. That and a bear gives a lot of meat and shit. We've got six meat eaters. Seven if you include pets. Alright, so we're going to say you're on the hunt. Or, no, six if you include pets. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try, to, I'm gonna try to find me a bear. You're on the hunt. And I'm bringing Maxwell with me. If he wants to come on the hunt. Will you tell him he'll come? <laughs> Do you want the other boys to stay back? I will tell you this. Maxwell's still looking pretty beat up from your confrontation. He's like, boss, uh, I'll come with you, but I, after all them licks I've taken from you, I don't know if I can do much for you. I just want eyes to make sure Bear not come from behind. All right, boss. I got, I got good got berries. Right, I'm good. I got your back. You're a vegetarian. You leave these meat eaters alone. <laughs> and I can help get food for them, at they, least. Well, they want to hunt, so we'll let them meat. hunt. So we'll let them hunt. <laughs> yeah. yeah Bar, what do you want to do? I mean, you hear these two about ready to go on a hunt. Did you want to come with or stay here? What's the idea? No, uh, I'm staying here at camp, uh, helping put up a campfire and. Since they're going hunting, I'm going to get. I'm going to set up like a spin. All right, I told good. Pat to stay in if something goes down. To help Bar. Protect Bar. You probably pointed at Pat's, pointed at Bar, and said, "Protect this," or "Protect him." I, I, I don't know. Just, yeah, but he'll be here. I, I get beast speech, beast speech runners so like you just straight up talk to him in dog, and no one else would know. Oh yeah, he's like, "All right, master, I got this." waddles over there and just kind of hangs around with Bar, trying not to get in his way but every now and then he just kind of scoots his head where he's kind of looking and then as you're trying to put the spit into the fire you kind of get tilted over a little bit where he kind of budges up against your side you're like Pat's you know might have to move him off you in order to get him to get out of your way but he's keeping a close eye on you which is what he was told I mean not uh, sure how much of an influence me pushing the Mastiff around with my strength as well. It was help uh, bar, not you know, pin bar to the ground and make sure he can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Safe. You 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 put your hand on his face and he like backs away as he feels the pressure of your hand. It's like you oh, could tell um, him. Like, yeah, and he's know. like he, he noticed that. Oh yeah, I am a little too close. Let me back up a bit so you can do whatever it is you think you can do. You know, he's like he'll give you the space once you indicate. Hey, I need a little room here. Uh, but yeah, now we have bar or not bar Gideon and the bandit leader. Uh, Maxwell going out looking for a bear. So for this, since you have uh, Maxwell looking behind you, you're looking forward, I will get you to do a couple of survival checks to see how close you get to this bear. 
definitely closing in. You two continue through the forest a little ways. You can find bigger, massive tracks of this bear being more indicative. And you guys get the sense that you're on the right trail. Uh, give me another one. You um, come across a small pond. And at this pond, you see a black bear. He's uh, currently drinking from the water. And he is not aware of you. You're about 60 feet away. So if you want to do this by perspective, let's bring our tokens down south so we can make like a perspective here. I will move us. Hold on one. Or, yeah, go ahead. I, I just jumped myself over to here just so I'm out of the action. All right, so what we will do... I'll, I'll have him sit at the tree line, just, you know, make sure another bear's not out there too. All right, we're going to say you're... I'm going to put you at 60. That's where you Close are. enough. Yeah, yeah. Man. This is just reference. It's not actual terrain. But you guys are like in some bushes right now. And he's watching behind you. Just making sure. And you're the first one that notices the bear. Just kind of down here mm -hmm. drinking at the water. I'll just whisper. Maxwell, you stay here. I go get bear. Okay? Are you sure, boss? Uh, you want me to shoot at it from here, maybe? I could do that for you. Pulls out his... Uh, you can... Yeah. If you think it helped. Yeah, I'll take shots from here then, boss. Alright, so noticing this bear and the fact that it's drinking, not giving a damn where I'm at. And you see... I'm trying to sneak All right. And you see Maxwell like open up his tunic and there's like a roll of bandolier of knives around, around his chest and he grabs a dagger. Just kind of gets ready in case he needs to throw it. And yeah, 22. Let me go ahead and see if this bear notices. I don't think he will. But he does have somewhat perceptive. Yeah. Nah, he's not aware of you. So, yeah, you're sneaking up on his bear. I'll uh, get 30. Oh, yeah, you 30. And. 35. Alright. And then the bear continues drinking. Yeah, uh, for the most part, he kind of looks up for a minute, but he's not looking in your direction. Sniffs the air. Yeah, I figured that rock was the lake area. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of consider everything in front of the bear from this point down. It's pretty much like the pond. And I can... There, there's the pond. And, yeah, the bear's there. Taking a lick. He sniffs the air like... He still put off a scent, and he kind of notice a scent in the air but he doesn't know where you are and he's unaware of you but then he goes back down to drink and another lick are you gonna need a new stealth check uh yes yeah, it's not gonna matter when i get to it if exactly. i get to it before it this, notices this will this will determine if we go to initiative before or after you attack all right that's all that's going to turn up and you will get the drop on him so the first round will go to you go ahead and roll me initiative and we'll no roll his initiative. Yeah, the bear rolls it to fear instinct right. advantage. Yep, so don't worry, it still works. You're oh, still... did it not advantage the initiative when I clicked mm -hmm. it? Click it again. You have to hover over it. There you go. So you're at fourteen. Either way, you still go first. Oh, okay. Now the first one actually did. No, it didn't. It rolled. It. it yeah, it's oh, over. okay. It's in the double parenthesis. Coding got me for a second there. So yeah, eight's fine. So you sneak up behind it, and it's about. It's still the same. Yeah. It. It, it looks forward and then you get a moment to where you can strike it before it can even notice your presence what do you want to do you're right up on him uh like i'm just, like the latch is gonna flip in my head rage and just swing click and then 21 and reckless attacking yep that will hit Mm, mm. And this thing lets out a loud yelp as you nearly take him down in one swipe. And now it is actually your turn in the initiative order. <laughs> well, yeah. rip the bear. Yeah, the bear gets struck. And then you see him go up on his hind legs and he's getting ready to swing at you. And you're like, oh, you're just giving me more target. So, <laughs> yeah. 
as you as it rears up on its leg, you just slam into it and it just crumples forward and now it's falling towards you. Make a dexterity saving throw to get out from it. Not the only thing I can do to you. <laughs> <laughs> Not the only thing. Yeah. We're smoking the poor woodland creature. It lands on top. Oh, you get advantage, don't you, on dex saves while raging? I do not believe it's dex on rage. It's athletics. Okay, then. It's a strength <laughs> check. Not so you, dex. you're pulling your pickaxe out, and then all of a sudden the bear falls forward and lands right on top of you. <laughs> Bears I'm about. just going to shove it off. Yeah, make a athletics check to get out as, as Leroy, or not Leroy, Maxwell runs down there and tries to help. Well falling out of rage this turn using the advantage actually you still got hit so yeah you did get hit probably could have done damage but <laughs> you roll this bear off and then maxwell finally catches up he's like holy shit you just rolled a giant bear off of you the hell are you made of sir no he's just impressed with gideon made of gideon <laughs> well i i guess we need to start finding a way to get this poor beast back to camp then all right uh, you know, I was going to drag it and have him keep an eye out for anything, you know, ahead of us. <laughs> Make it. Because, <laughs> because I get the freaking advantage to push and drag. <laughs> athletics checks yeah, here. Yeah, go ahead. Make, make, make me some athletics checks. Even outside checks. of raging. <laughs> so go ahead and make them athletic checks. Uh, wrong button. <laughs> How Gideon are you? <laughs> Yeah, you get this poor bear back to camp, and there's a few times that uh, Maxwell has to help you. Like, you got the bear caught between Over two a log trees. Or yeah, or, or, yeah, like two trees you went through, you didn't think about it, and he kind of helps you tilt the bear left to right to kind of get it through, and then you're like, yoink, and it pops right on through, and then eventually you all see Gideon, Gideon, this bear back to camp, <laughs> and Maxwell's like holding his head, hand to his head, he's like, I cannot believe how Gideon you are. <laughs> and this poor bear corpse. You see a black bear in the possession of Gideon as the two of these guys kind of roll back into camp. Well, hunting went well. Uh, Gideon, fine bear. Ryder, <laughs> Ryder if you skin it, I'll cook it. I was I gonna was... skin it with a stone and strip it and all. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I'd rather not. I say as I look at the poor black bear. No. I would assume Gideon would want to use the stone to skin it anyway. Yeah, skin it with the stone. It's survival for this. This one since I'm not crafting this it. This will be survival, and I'll need you to tell me what you roll oh. as I look for the sheet again. Alright, I got the sheet ready. What'd you roll? Herp. Is that a natural one? or? No, it's nowhere near a natural one. I wish it was. I could re-roll it. I just had is, an untold with that, advantage from the athletics. What is that formula, though, that it's rolling? Um, 1d20, roll less than 1 plus 4. Sure that's not a 1? What's your... It's like, like a, like a, there you go. See, a straight check. Like, it's not doing any tomfoolery. What, what the, uh, what the 1d whatever roll does is create a random generation between 0 and 19 for that, and then it adds 1. So, it's 1 to 20. Why would it's it do basically something a random integer mod 20. Mm, sounds like more work than they need. See? Okay. Well, it didn't do it for the persuasion. Why is it doing it for the survival? Is it because I'm proficient in it? It's doing weird thingies? Oh, the persuasion even has that formula too. Okay, so the, yeah, there's yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. weird about it. It's just displaying something. Yeah, so, I so guess yeah, it... four to eight on the skinning. So uh, unfortunately, you only get like a small patch of this bear as the crystal is unable to process the entire thing fully. But it still grants you XP, and that's a that's four charges you use today, I believe, right? Yep, three masks and a skinning, and then field strip it. You know, harvest the meat and all that crap. 
you know, I'll allow you to make a separate check for that for survival if you want to harvest the meat and any body parts. At the point, the skinning was just for the crystal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, do it with advantage. The captain will help you. Since nobody else is saying anything. All right. So yeah, you guys managed to get big chunks of meat off of this bear. So you go ahead and start fire roasting some uh, bear meat. You managed. I kind of go to Charlene and I'm like, "Don't look! Don't look, Charlene!" Sorry. <laughs> Don't look at the. He's naked. Sorry. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was hoping to be able to make a new one cloth out of that, but it didn't get enough. No, it didn't. That was a poor roll altogether. But you do manage to get, like, four bear claws, like the claw itself off the talons and whatnot. Four separate pieces of usable talon of bear claw. Uh, if you want teeth, you can. I could roll you some teeth if you want. Otherwise, yeah, the the skin if I, is If I can gone. get two canine, like the two, like, fangy teeth, and then mm -hmm. the four claws, that's more than enough. Yeah, I'd say you'd be able to get at least that much from the survival. So you pop out a couple of canines and... How many other teeth did you want? Uh, the rest of them can all get, you know, shunted away with the awful right. and all, unless someone else wants... All right, I'll so give, you, you get about... I'll give Pat one of the bones, hell. He can I'll have a bone. <laughs> yeah, you get about three fangs teeth, like a top one on the left. The right one looked like it was busted a long time ago. And then the two at the bottom. So you managed to get three fangs out of the bear. So three bear fangs. And then you said four claws? Four. Is that individual talons, or is that like four paws in, worth of claws? Individual talons, because the okay. skin has been removed, so you kind of don't have that luxury of having that all intact, so to speak. Like, the skin would keep it bagged together, but since that got ripped off, yeah, you just have the talons. That's enough for a bear fang and talon necklace to make to commemorate, you know, the first hunt for the new guy. There you go. So yeah, you guys now have roasted meat being <laughs> on the spit, and you guys are now setting up camp. Um, as the night progresses, I would say, but like a couple hours after the hunt is completed and all the skinning, all the survivaling to get the meat, you manage to cook up. Uh, hmm, let me roll something. We'll, we'll, we'll go with a. 20 pieces. Say. I would say you would, with the hugeness of this bear, you managed to roast up 20 rations of bear meat. But keep in mind that this bear meat can expire within three days. Yeah, because we don't have a bunch of salt with us to salt and preserve it. Yeah, unless you have a way to preserve it, it's going to go bad within two to three days. But you got it cooked. Should last for a while. Now, is that including what we eat tonight? I would say not including like you were able to salvage 20 okay. more extra pieces of rations and you don't have to like mark off any rations and i assume riders having a good berry since they don't want to eat meat yeah all right i forgot to get rations last time i uh went into town well you're in a bad way if you're stuck with us for a while because we're eating meat well i got good berries yeah they that's taste... like yeah that's that'll hold you over for a whole day but yeah, you guys managed to settle in for the night. Nice hunt. The stars are like shining. The air's getting chillier. So you're maintaining a fire in order to stay warm for the night. Um, you three probably have bedrolls. If these guys were allowed to grab their horses, which was never brought up, I should probably ask. Did you want them? Well, I asked them if they had anything about like, a camp. They said no, no camp. They had no camp, but they Whoa. did have horses. Like you sent two of those horses with the others. Which means there was three left. These three's horses. Well, then yeah, they'd have their own horses. Like we're not leaving. All right, horses so out I will. Wilds. I will say you had these horses tied to the carriage. So there's three other horses, and they have their bedrolls there. So they got their bedrolls as well. All right, that's all I want to resolve. <clears throat> but you do have three more beasts of burden if you need them. I have a question. Yes. Do I know about, like, any sort of ironwood in, like, you know, naturally occurring around in, like, the China Kingdom? Ironwood? Like, is there wood that's made of iron, or what are you asking specifically? There's a special it's... druidic wood that they can use for, like, heavy armor. Because it's not hard to look for some to possibly, you know, be able to make or get better armor. Mm. 
I don't know. I don't know how it's normally acquired make in a, the game. Make a nature check. This is something I haven't considered because I don't have a lot of druids in my parties. Because I can't wear, you know, a nature check. You said. Yep. Yep. Make a nature check. Um, well, oh if, it, there, if there are any, there doesn't seem to be any in the vicinity of where you are camping. Alright. I'll be sleeping with the horses. Hmm. How do you want to set up watch? And how do you want to set up the camp? Because this might be coming something that we need to know. Well, if the fire is the star, mm -hmm. then the bear can disappear now. Thing. I mean, I'd be fine, you know, set up like pretty much where I am. And where do you want the horses so that they own? Are you keeping all five horses together, or? No, those horses don't do belong with my our horses. So where do you put uh, them? Their horses can be wherever their horses want to be. I was thinking uh, Charlene and Fred would be like over in this area, you know, kind of near the woods. What is that? I have no idea what that was supposed to be. That is a wait. These are draft horses. That's kind of funny how we have riding horses pulling our carriage or cart, and then there are draft horses that they ride. Well, the draft horses are also a beast of burden. Yeah. Like they can actually pack everything they own on the horse and themselves. Mm -hmm. Then we're not doing cart races. It wouldn't matter too much. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think they all have uh, about the same HP and everything. Well, actually, these are a little stronger, but yours look pretty. Pat's and his 5 HP kind of make me nervous, because that dude's going to get smoked. <laughs> Better hope he doesn't get caught on fire. But, okay, so, yeah, you tell me where you want the horses to be, where you guys want to set up your bedrolls, where do you want the bandits to set up their bedrolls. Like, I just need to know where everybody is situated, so in case something does happen... We have everything situated to where everybody needs to be. So it's up to you guys. Where do you want everybody to be when it's time to go to bed? I'll be here, you know. All right, Bar? I'll be a little closer to the bandits. Like where you're at now? Uh, yeah. And where Either. the bandits are now, if dude wants to move closer to the fire. Yeah. yeah. All right. And pick at their horses on, you know... I can't move them, but figure, you know, you can picking them over on this side. You want them over there? It just, you know, so they're away from the road so much. All right, there you go. Not a bad idea. Uh, Bar, if you want to move somewhere else, you can. Just move your characters where you would sleep. And then we'll get into the watch list. And then start thinking about who wants to take first, second, and third watch. All right. First watch, who do we want? I will take a watch with the uh, two subordinates. Do we want that? To no, be the two, the two minions. Yeah, Jim and Jim and uh, Leroy. Yeah, Leroy. Yeah, I'll, I'll take mine with Maxwell. And then Ryder will take hers with the horses. But who's first? Yeah, <laughs> all five freaking horses. I'll just be chatting with the horses all night. And then the horse is like, shut up, I'm trying to sleep. Oh, wait, okay. Alright, so, who wants to go first? That's all I need to know. Don't all jump at once. I'll go first. I'll okay. get... Alright. Okay. Make a perception. I'll go second. Alright, so you and Maxwell are kind of sitting up. And that was a mighty fine hunt you had there. Gideon try to be good at this stuff. Gideon live on his own for a long time. And then you want the, uh, the perception yeah. there? Yeah, you can do it with advantage since Maxwell's kind of helping you. Well, he kind of... Never mind. There. 
It's a good Gideon want to get you guys this tough because our fight pit's supposed to make a lot of money, and we can't win if we don't have strong people. Fair enough. I'm looking forward to your training, Gideon. Uh, I don't think he is. <laughs> yeah, he's not saying it with no heart. He's just like kind of forced into the situation, but you know. Oh, you pick up this boulder. <laughs> yeah. Gideon does it. Now your turn. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, well, obviously, it, I'm not going to be so full of my own shit. Like, you have to do exactly what Gideon do. You just, you know. Yeah, so here's the deal. It gets to about 10 in the evening. Everybody's now finally going to sleep except for you and Maxwell. 11 comes around. You two are still maintaining watch. And then twilight hours start to hit. And off into the far distance, deep into the... Like, if you look at this map, you're not following natural north to south. It's actually east to west going up and down. Left to right is south to north. So if you look towards your right on the map, you're actually looking at north. So further north of your camp, deeper into the forest or hills or whatever might be over in that direction, you can see like a light glow as the twilight hours kind of start to swift in. And it kind of shimmers and dies. Shimmers and dies. Kind of similar to the effects you've seen when you were at the crossroads. And, you know, next to our damn house. And next door to your damn house. Yep. At the cemetery. Would the light wake me up? No. No, it's, it doesn't seem to be causing any detrimental damage. It doesn't seem to be close enough to be a bother. It's just a an annoying light source that's coming from the north, as far as you could tell, as Gideon. And Maxwell kind of lifts his head as the watch is starting to come to an end, and he's like, what the hell is that? That's a it, ethereal bleed, I think it was called. Ghosties appear there. Ghosties? <laughs> Wait, what? Ghosties? Yeah, the see-through, you know, ooh, spooky. Mm, I ain't afraid of no ghost. They're not fun to fight. Uh, Ghostbusters. Uh, well, he doesn't seem to be afraid, but it made him flinch at first. <laughs> you, you're just you're just saying that, right? Yeah. Ah. No, I just say that it happened next to our house at one point. Well, not you know, like a block away, but still. Ah ha ha! I think it was a block away, wasn't it? Yeah, it, he's being skeptical at this point, but he's like, "Well, I'll believe you, sir." Uh, our watch is over. Do we want to just go ahead and wake up whoever? Bar, you were taking a second? Yep. Yeah. So you wake yeah. up Bar and the minions. All right, you lot. He kind of slaps him upside the head and wake him up. You're on watch. He doesn't slap Bar, but, you know, he slaps his people. And they're like, ah, oh, <laughs> Please slap me. But no, he won't do that because he knows there's a Gideon right behind him. That will Gideon him. <laughs> there's, a, there's a raging Gideon. In there's a Gideon that's watching him, so he's not going to do something that's going to get him Gideon. <laughs> but yeah, so Bar, uh, Gideon kind of wakes you up, and it's up to you if you want to mention he has three bleed. Otherwise, he will notice it shortly yeah, after I'd, waking up. I'd tell him about the lights up there. Like That thing happened by our house going on there. Uh, okay, I'll be sure to watch out for it. It far place. away. Still doesn't mean it won't reach this. I'm hoping Maxwell hears the byplay like, oh shit, uh, it's not just a... Oh yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, well, he's not the only one that's seen it, okay. Um, alright, let's see what we got here to work with. So do I see anything in the ethereal plane that's like moving around in this area? Uh, that's interesting because uh, ro what does your what does your robe allow you? It allows you to see into the ethereal plane as well. Mm hmm. Let's see here. Perhaps this light's not blinking in and out for you. Perhaps it's solid, and you could see formations of old ancient ruins that. You know, it doesn't look like it belongs in this time and age. You know, like, um, the, how, how would you put it? Like, the formations of these ruins look like they're so, 
mundane compared to the technology for today. I mean, still, the technology is not that advanced. I mean, you do have blacksmiths who make, like, rivets and stuff like that to help make things even more solid and, you know, wooden structures and whatnot. But this all seems to be made out of, like, white stones that have been stacked in a certain way to create walls, but they've been broken down and shambled. So it's, like, in a rune-like state, like something just came through and just plowed through everything. Um, you so... Maybe. I'm assuming I can tell what my rope can see and what I can see. It all looks the same to you. Like, you can't tell what's what. And if I'm okay. it's So, all... I saw this as Gideon was saying, oh, it's way up there. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I know that he couldn't see this or else he'd be freaking out by the time you woke me up. Yeah, like, the ruins actually kind of reach the outskirts of your camp. But he doesn't see that. So the ruins don't make it to the road, but they kind of stop, like right where, right where your camp is. And it's almost like there's a pathway between two trees that kind of lead in deeper, as if it was almost inviting you. You alone are the only one that could see that trail. Boy, I you... really won't. Hang on. Yeah, aren't you glad you got this robe, huh? <laughs> The captain kind of lays down okay, in his bedroll go. and he flops the thing over his head. He's like, I'm going to sleep. And the other two blokes are like, well. And they're looking at the blinking lights like, that. that's odd. Is that like a lighthouse or something? What's, what's going on up there? And Bar, I will need a perception check from you shortly. It's in. Is that with advantage? It yeah, rolled straight uh, 18 and then 10. It, it, it rolled, yeah, straight 18. But uh, all right, so. I don't know if I would have disadvantage with all this stuff happening around me. But I, you know. I'm I mean, he would have been seeing it to the ethereal plane the whole time and realizing that when I'm yeah. walking through walls that they don't exist. Yeah, yeah, that would be it. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's movement. You can see things moving in this ethereal plane. And then there's like the soft burst of earth about 30, 40 feet away from your camp. And this is kind of backwards since we're on the edge of that map on the other way. <sighs> Consider ourselves kind of flipped <laughs> again because like we camped on this side of the map and definitely would be further north, but we'll kind of say like the directions have kind of flipped in a way. Uh, next time we just camp next to the stream, how about that? Yeah, yeah, I guess we could do that. But, um,. For the sake of distance, and then, yeah, this is, this is just me. You see in the distance about five figures just kind of wandering towards your location as if they've located something with a life source that they can try to go after. Do my bandit friends have weapons? They have their, they have whatever you left them with, yeah. Or did we... That's a good I question. Forget. Did you disarm them, or did you... Did we disarm? liberate their weapons? I, think I mean, I had no problem. He, the dude dropped his, and I'm assuming he picked him up before he left. I will say that they are in the back of your carriage. So if you want to arm them, they would have to run to the carriage, and then they can pull out their mm -hmm. light crossbow or scimitar. Or both, of course. They could just pick it up as a free action. So they would have to sacrifice movement to get to the carriage, and then they'll be able to continue with whatever. So are you going to try to have this fight without your other people waking up or I mean these look like well I figure this would be a pretty good test of strength but on the other hand we did almost kill them so I don't want to you know get well, them killed the two, the two of them have had a short rest technically speaking the two of before these, the long rest finishes out these two never got damaged <laughs> they were like too far back to actually take any real I'm damage I'm going to whistle and shout get in Um, yeah, I'm not going to try to do a perception check, fucker. I'll get up. All right, so you get up. And you... <laughs> no, and this, that's not... And this wasn't no more have... than five or ten minutes after you laid down. So you're like, I just got to sleep. It's basically the mood you're in. Uh, what happened? I get up rubbing my eyes. Yeah, I'll let Ryder get up as well. And... Bar, are you just kind of pointing that direction or what? I'm going to point and say, uh, zombies. 
Actually, we'll leave these guys here. We'll say 510, 510. So they're running to the carriage to get their weapons. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start a new initiative order. So let me clear. You may roll initiative. Okay, good. Yeah, select your token, roll initiative, and we will start from here. Part of me was like, this is in our realm, but part of me was like, these are in the ethereal realm, the ethereal realm, and I can't tell the difference, and I'm waking up everybody for no reason. I mean, the Earth actually moved. They're like, these are something coming out of the. Yeah. If it becomes something, the horses are going to be in the initiative order. Max will stay asleep. Do you want him up? I mean, it's uh, up to you. I'm, I'm getting up. Maxwell's getting up. Right. Right. Max was like, uh, uh, I just got this. What the bloody hell is that shit coming at us? Yeah, so we'll go ahead and wake him up. See, Maxwell told you dead things. Holy shit, you weren't lying. What the fuck? And with that, I do believe we have all the initiatives. With Bar starting off the fight. So, Bar, you see these slow moving corpses coming towards you. Can we get him centered uh, on a square real quick? Yeah, I was gonna. Sorry. He bothers me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I copy paste, so. I'm not always on a square, but there you go. I am going to actually do close range, because I'm getting a little tired of sitting in the back with the bow. Alright, I like this. Not for the reasons uh -huh. you think. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Uh, if I hold my action, would I be able to do movement and an action? You would have to move before you hold it. You, you can just, theoretically you could hold your entire thing until later in the initiative order. If you want me to push you down the initiative order, I can do that too, yeah. For the uh, one turn. Gideon for this turn, if possible. <laughs> after, after Gideon? Okay, so you're kind of like holding your turn down. No, actually, I'm going to move you down to 13. To I mean, I'll take, I'll take the 13. I don't, I don't yeah, yeah, carry yeah, we can do that. We can do that. We can oh, do yeah. That. Oh, yeah, all then the we'll enemies move, are... We'll move you to 13 then. Yeah, because I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to set up your sneak attack. Uh, so your bandit friends grab their weapons... I think they want to just shoot their crossbows because they're not sure what the hell they're dealing with. And if it helps them, they, they shoot the things. Yeah, yeah, but that's it's nighttime as well, so I think it's going to be a disadvantage for them since they're not close enough. To Are they them. dwarves or humans? Uh, these are considered humans, I suppose. <laughs> it could be any race. Oh, so yeah, I haven't no, given no them a race. Vision. Yeah, I haven't given them like any race, so I. Uh, I figured they'd be humans. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we'll say humans. Let's see. I will say 30 feet is dim light and then the rest is dark. So if there's anything within 30 feet of them, they can move towards it if they need to. It's not going to get to that, I don't think. Alright, they still have movement, so I could say they can move up here and then take their shots at the front line without disadvantage. So it'll be a straight roll as they pull out their light crossbows. One shoots at the north. Holy crap. Where were these shots nice. earlier? <laughs> right? <laughs> 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 16 points of damage on that guy, but I think there's a resistance. Oh, these things are not resistant to piercing. Interesting. So, it's 16 points of damage. I mean, they are zombies. You gotta shoot them in the head. Yeah, I usually think it was like most games, bludgeoning damage is full damage and everything else, like slashing and piercing was half damage. And then the other one will shoot at the one at the south end. Oh, he gets a hit too. Good for him. For nine piercing damage. So he shoots at this one here and takes nine. Uh, the draft horses are just kind of cozy over there. They hear noise, but they're not reacting. Gideon. The barbarian charges. The barbarian may do so. What do you want to charge Womp. to? Right in the middle of everything. And nah. yeah, no, I'll, I'll rage. Hurrah. 
and I'm trying to basically be, you know, as loud as possible, and the one that, to, it'd be on my right as I ran in, I'm going to go ahead and start swinging at him. Let's see, and that's what advantage, yeah, you hit. These aren't really that hard to hit. Uh, which one did you want again? I'm sorry. I was reading something. Uh, this one here. Oh, wait, got it. Go ahead and make your damage roll. Minus 14, and then he needs to roll. So that's a total of... So he needs to make a 13 on his... All right, so that one shatters into a bunch of like flesh and meat and bones as it falls to the ground. I did want to give the bear a chance early, but I will be taking my extra attack this time. So right. this one. Uh, click. There, it goes. there you go. All right, and go ahead and roll damage. And this one takes a severe pick through the chest. You pull it back, and half of its innards are on your pick, but it still seems to be fighting. Anything else for your turn there, Gideon? You know, I think I'm good on this right now. Alright, alright. So, you're good. A bar. It is now back to you. So, I have a question. I have answers. Without the dual wielding feet, I can, in fact, dual wield, but I won't have my, uh... I won't have any additional damage on the damage die, and my attack roll won't be proficient, right? Um, uh, I think it's still proficient. Like, you're using your bonus action attack with the offhand, so without the dual wielder feet or two-handed feet, I can't remember which off the top of my head, you just don't get to add your dex damage to it. Yeah, you don't uh, get the uh, stat the stat boost, stat mod, the stat mod to damage. Yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, you would still get You're still proficient get your... with the weapon, but you're not proficient with the damage. Yeah, you're yeah, damaging your dual order right now. That's fine. So you pull out. What, what's what's your offhand anyway? I uh. Oh crap! That's right. The short sword got made into a mythic sword. So I have a dagger in my off. All right. Cool. Where do you want to go? And what's that? A going to go to the bottom right. Why is your bar three saying a lot? That's my movement speed. A lot. Okay. All right, there you are. And I will attack the uh, one at the top left. Sure thing. I'll let you go ahead and roll your attack roll. That is a hit. For he's got that nasty little flank. He does he? Does <laughs> indeed. And then that's a total. Give me the total there while I look up something. That 23. Yeah, that's not going to save it. Alright, so yeah, you reach up there, you go slamming your blade down, and it crumbles right as the manticore blade just kind of rips through whatever flesh and bone it still had left, and then you catch the rest of the goo that was caught on um, the pick, and you and Gideon are having like a temporary tug of war from the in innards that are kind of like caught on your weapons the intestinal tug of war yeah so yeah you got that going on i mean you could easily smack it free and then you're free to move wherever you want at that point but yeah you managed to kill this zombie he is not getting back up uh well i don't think i'm going to go any further on this turn so i'm going to uh use my bonus action to dash yeah all right where you want to go all right no, you'll get a turn. Don't worry. All right. And that's your turn, right? Um, this guy here, he wants to get in the middle of this fight to prove that he's not scared of these ghosts. Let's see how far that is. That's a bit. That's a bit. So maybe he'll just use this turn to... Okay, okay. So he goes here. That's 30. And then if he closes in, that's... Yeah, he could do that. So, he's so he did get some rest in, like, short rest on the travel, did he not? Uh, I didn't count it. Because he just sat in the back of the caravan. I did not count it, but I might be able to do something about that. I just see. know he was fucked to hell and it'd make, like, 
I just told him, like, you gotta you know, stay alive and be strong. So we'll put him back right. in his full health, I would say. We did have supper. Yeah, yeah we I did have supper, I would, I would say after the meal and sitting there for a while, he got a full rest, or pretty much a short rest. But he's able to close distance, and that's as far as he can go. So if anything, he kind of set... Yeah, he set the stage for Bar again if he needs to close in and get a action on this one at the bottom. Otherwise, you know, he's just there. Now... These two zombies crunch forward and then they turn left so they can fully see you, Gideon, and the other one turns right so we can fully see and you. And they already had advantage. I'm recklessly attacking. They're just going for overkill right now. Yeah, pretty much. So, they, you know, it's like they were still moving forward and then after seeing you, they're like, oh, let's stop here and grab a bite. Oh, look, the food came to us. That's yeah, yeah, they, they were taking a step forward thinking they had to go a little further. That one slams his arms down and misses. Damn, they both kind of just... Whoop, and miss you as you kind of like... Duck. Die. Duck and you, weave. You're like, you didn't even have to put much effort. You could see these slow attacks coming towards you, and it's so easy for you to get out of the way. Like, okay. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Uh, your dog is up if you want him to do anything, but I assume he'll stay back there. You want Patch to it, do was anything? It? He was on the list just yeah, in case. I don't have Patch's character sheet is the other issue. He has 5 HP. No, I don't have his sheet, though. I put it in your journal. It's under Massive. Oh, it, oh. it should be in I need your to rename journal. that Patch, I think. There we yeah, go. You could do that, because I could just pull another Massive off the monster manual if I need to. But yeah, there you go. No, I've got it here. Yeah. Okay. So, if you want him to do anything, otherwise he'll heal. Okay, he's got 40 foot movement was part of it. Because I doesn't I need to know how far he can move. Right. And he also doesn't get the pack tactics thing either. But it's not going to matter. Do you get pet? Oh, I can't roll his bite. Can I? Did I? You should be able to. Yeah, you did. And it Wow. Misses. That really misses. Is that a one? I can't tell what the fudge this stuff is. It's that's a two, right? Yeah, it's a two plus three and a two plus three. <sighs> okay. Yeah, you missed. <laughs> he doesn't critical, so he's fine. But Pats comes up there and threatens that space, so there you go, you got that going for you. Uh Ryder. Hey look, you get a turn. You see three zombies in the back row. Two of them have fainted and died. You're way back here by the horses. What do you want to do? I believe, in all fairness, there's a third zombie that has not acted. Oh, I just realized yeah. that after I did pass this shit. Yeah, let me yeah, check. No. Okay. Maxwell's got a zombie in front of him. I'll go ahead and roll that against Maxwell then. Holy crap, he gets a natural 20. Alright, Max, you're taking some damage. <laughs> well, at least you convinced me to heal him, so... Ryder, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Or three bludgeoning. Oh, blood. I had my mic muted somehow. Uh, Alright, so good. there you go. So, yeah, Max takes three points of damage as this zombie kind of slams its arms down on him. Him being a little bit taller probably caused it to happen because it was harder for him to duck directly out of the way. But still, he got clipped a little bit. Ryder, what do you want to do? You move forward? I, yeah, I move uh, my 25 feet up next to these dudes. And I'm like, what's happening? Zombies! Please. Zombies! Yeah, they're pointing their crossbows uh, in the direction of the zombies. Oh, I've seen these before. Probably. And I will point my staff up to the sky and a streak of light from the moon comes down. Moon beam, aiming so. at this square, which will hit those two zombies. They must both make, I think, what was it, a wisdom? Constitution. Oh, Constitution. Uh, gotcha. DC is 15, I think. Well, you better find out for sure. Look at your sure. spell I'm DC. I'm find out, but yeah, 15. Alright, where I are you pointing it? Point? Uh, right here. It'll hit both of these dudes. It's a 5 foot radius, so it'll... Yeah, your pings, for the record, are 5 foot radiuses. See that? Oh, see that? oh so yeah, you... it is. And since it's persisting, that's that's its point of origin. Yeah. Alright. 
for 18 points of damage. Holy shit. Okay. Radiant damage, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Let me double check immunities. I basically brought down the light of the moon down on these blue dudes, and they start burning with a, you know, a gray-white fire. All right, so it doesn't say they're immune. Like, they're not... They don't take double damage from Radiant. So, but still, that's a lot of damage. So they take 18, which puts them at about that much. Okay. They're at that much. Then I just kind of yawn and be like, you know... Oh, wait, that's not the one. Go ahead. What else? I'm just going to say, why do zombies have to attack now? I was just starting to have a nice dream. I'll go, I'll go back to that if I heard it. You can dream later of killing more zombies now. Yeah, true. All right, I'm so, just concentrating on my beam of light. Yep, so you got that concentration spell up. So we'll make a light crossbow attack at this. And the one at the bottom will hit. See how much damage he does for four points of damage, which is exactly what he needs to drop it to zero. And let's see what happens. So that means nine. Holy shit! <laughs> and that zombie's not getting back up. Good for you. So he fires off the crossbow for the first one and tries to go for the one that's near Gideon, and he totally misses it. It kind of zooms over Gideon's head, unfortunately, not hitting a damn thing. And then the one at the bottom, the second one, shoots at the bottom one, and it slams it to, like, the forehead. And you can see, like, brain matter or dusty brain musk coming out the back of this thing. And it falls to the ground, and then it kind of moves for a moment, but then it's just <laughs> crumbles into dust. And the bandit kind of... Yeah, the bandit turns to the other guy. See that? I got him! <laughs> hey, good job, Leroy. Yeah, thanks, Jim. And then you told him, hey, good shot. Thanks. Uh, Ryder, right? Yeah. Yeah. Draft horses are fine. They're not going to move. They don't feel threatened. Gideon. That will hit. And which one do you want? <laughs> oh, which one? That, that was the one south of me. Because Pat, Pat still has a chance to get on the action. All right, so that's Maybe. negative sixteen. Wait, no, that one got oh, no, smoked too. Dead. So that one's so that one's definitely the, yeah. This one would have to roll probably a natural twenty. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I feel right. like it, it needs to roll a natural twenty. Actually, yeah. So what happens is you wham, and the thing goes down. Then it stands back up like, and it's got one little itty bitty hit point now because of that. So you know you did a deadly blow to the zombie, and you're like, "Hey, got him!" And then it started to rise back up in front of you. You know. I was going to be a little more thematic with it, but I guess I'm going to have to hit him again. I guess so. I mean, you could... Because I was going to do, like, this massive crescent swing from one and then try to pail in, you know, pale into the other, but he's still up. Yeah, he decided to get back up on you, that son of a bisque. Fucking asshole. Hey, that still hits. <laughs> For 16. So, he would have to get a 19. Well, it'll also be the second save on the turn. I don't know if that matters. I know it does for barbarians. No, no. You slap him down again. And he stands back up. He is resilient on not wanting to die. It's undead fortitude. Keeps saving it. Barely. And you're just like, this guy's just, you know, he keeps getting up. What, 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 dude, stay down. You know, you kind of got that. You should stay down. You should know better. But, um, yeah, he's, he gets right I'm back I'm already up. raging. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, like, scream up at this guy. Yeah, and this guy. Unadulterated fury. Yeah, and this zombie is, like, taking the damage. You see pieces of its body torn to bits, but this whatever is keeping it is still keeping it alive. You know, it's still managing to be able to fight somehow. It gets to the ground, and then it gets back up. 
and it comes to bark. Frothing at the mouth a little bit. I'm that angry at this thing for not dying yet. It's like, why aren't you dead? And it's a miracle it is still alive. Like, wow. Okay. Right? Like, that thing, like like I said, if he didn't roll a natural 20, he would not have gotten back up. And bam, there it is. A bar. Seeing Gideon cannot take out a simple zombie, I'm going to walk up to him. <laughs> okay, go you right ahead. You say a word about that later, I'm going to bitch smack you <laughs> next week. Just watch, he'll save on his con too. Alright, so what do you want to do? Okay, so, question I've never thought of doing. Uh, can I choose which attack my... Uh, okay, so I, I can use bonus first and then... Uh, regular action next, you have right? to, you So have I to, can attack no, dagger, no, no. then... Negative. You have to start your action with the main attack before you can offhand. <sighs> okay, I was wanting to use... I was trying to use dagger with a sneak attack. I mean, you could aim at the bigger threat with your bigger okay. weapon and then turn to the other one and use your whittled dagger against the little or threat if you feel like that's necessary. Yeah. Like, that's if you no... want to aim at the one above him with the sword, yeah, you could do that. And then you can do a dagger attack on the one that's barely alive. That would yeah, be how you can do that. that. It's all about that, when that, that you expedite it. You can expedite it however you want, but you can't say I'm going to bonus attack first. You got to attack first. Okay. Okay. But no, I that's will, a good question. Uh, good question. Uh, I, I will attack the one up top first. All right, go ahead and make that attack roll as you bring out your sword and you're like, hey, Gideon. That will hit still. And you do have advantage. Too. All right. No, I do not. Actually. Well, doesn't matter. Their AC, their AC, their AC is shit. You're fine. You're hit. You hit. Let's go ahead and roll damage, and that's a total of uh, nineteen. Right, Still alive. That one was fresh, but he's still alive. So you whack, bring the manticore sword down on top of him. Take a good chunk of its shoulder blade, nearly toppling it, but it's still standing there, managed to threaten you and getting it in the dog eventually. You want to take the dagger to the and... other one, or... The, the idea was to, like, walk up to Gideon and, like, stab one with a dagger and stab the other with a sword. So go ahead and make the dagger attack on the south one, right? That will hit. Alright, okay. just the four. So that would be... He needs to make an eight. You stab it. You see it take a knee. Then all of a sudden it stands right back up with its undead fortitude keeping it alive and it just kind of ah, stares towards you with your if, dagger if Gideon gets much angrier and louder after seeing this I'm going to have to make a con save to avoid a heart attack or popping a blood vessel on my forehead <laughs> I'm just going to be surprised that it's just going to be one zombie that keeps going up and down uh, Maxwell is finally here he'll go up to this one and be like you having trouble boss I'll see if I can't do anything about it question about um... your light he gets if he steps there, he will get hit. All right, so I want to assume yeah, yeah. I'm going to make an intelligence yeah. check to see if he, see if he would know. Yeah, because this is something he's never seen before, and he might think if I stand there, I'll be able to see better. All right, I, so I like gonna, hold up my hand and I'm like, wait, wait. That's... All right, so he stops in his tracks and he's like standing right here. Oh, okay, okay, I won't stand in that. That looks like it might hurt, and he'll take a swing at the. Uh, the guy with a the undead whack-a-mole. Natural 20. Good he work. is not getting nice. back up because critical hits prevent undead fortitude. So with a critical hit, its bones splatter to the ground and spread into dust. And he kind of looks over to Gideon. Gideon, are you okay, sir? I'm just screaming in fury. You do good. New one. You know, next one. Like, just... Aye, aye, sir. And let's see, that... Took only five feet of movement. Because he gets three attacks. Yeah, let me move him. Let me see where he can go. So he's going to go... He can move through my space and over the dead bodies, too. All right, let's see here. Well, yeah, but he can't... Yeah, he can't go through here. Through um... here. Cause... Yeah, he steps one him. up over the zombie, diagonal across my space, and bang. All right, so he toggles yeah. his way through you and Bar and tries to get to the other side without getting in that moonbeam. He's like, ha ha, watch me where it would work, boss. I'll show you how it's done. And he's got two more swings. Or he's got one more swing Never with the scimitar. And that will do... 
So that's never mind the fact Bars already smacked at one. Yeah, so that's his total of six, so it brings it down to it needs to roll an eight to come back up. Natural twenty on the zombie. He smacks yeah, the it with the remains. Yeah, he slaps this fucking zombie. You think he dealt the killing blow and then all of a sudden it stands back up with one HP. And then he brings his dagger because he gets his third attack on the offhand. It's like, why don't you stay down? And drops the dagger down on it. That will hit for a total of seven. So that's eleven it needs to make in order to keep coming back up. And with that dagger toss, the zombie looked like it was about to get back up, but then the captain just kind of drills the dagger into its skull and just kind of, stay down, you piece of shit. And then he's like panting there for a minute. It's like, is that all of them? And searching for targets, sort of wildly yeah, at this really point. I use my moonbeam as like a searchlight looking around because I can move it up to 60 feet per turn. Alright, so who would... Uh, 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 I'm going to stay away from the giant Rider, spotlight. Ryder, you would... Or the massive can make a perception He's check. fine. Uh, he, I'll make his perception. Though, yeah, yeah, make a perception with ease and smell. Ryder, make a perception using sight as you're kind of moving the moonbeam around trying to figure out if you see anything. Has advantage... Very so. good. Uh, it oh, it already rolled the perception. Whoops. Whoa, okay. Twice. This dude smelled the... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> this dude just smelled the sun, and it's nighttime. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> weird how that happens. You notice one more that has kind of like went a different route than the others and is slowly making its way towards Ryder. Ryder, you don't catch it, but the massive smells it, and he kind of like... <laughs> And kind of move him towards it as instinct. He's not going to go all the way up to it. I would say he would move about here and kind of point in a direction with his nose and forepaw. Which, where, where you, there was a ping that I did not see. If you pinged. I did ping here. Can, I can't. Oh, wait, I'm on the wrong layer. I'm on the wrong layer. That's probably why you didn't see it. I'll move him. No wonder I can't see it. Boop. So your dog moves there. And he points to the north. His uh, perception check will be his turn for this. So with that, Ryder, you got an indication. I was going to ask if I can get the free action. Be like, Ryder. And have him bump over to here just in case. All right. So he made an indication to the west in this case, I guess. Or east. I don't know anymore. We'll figure it out. But uh, Ryder. It you, would be you, west. Either way. You know that there's a zombie up here now. Yeah, I'll swing my moonbeam spotlight over to him and Now, correct start me if I'm it. wrong, but you only have certain amount of movement that the moonbeam can actually go per turn, right? 60 feet. On each of your turns after you cast the spell, you can move the act you can use an action to move the beam yeah, that's 60 an action. feet. So you're going to use your action to do that. So you're not going to do anything else yeah. but that. I mean, yeah, pretty much. On top of it, yeah, per, uh, uh, I'll like move it right behind it so that if someone wants to stand here, they can. Yeah, there's more than enough movement there to keep it from okay. scorching us as it passes. Hold on, I'm working. I'm working. Yeah, if you moved it directly over us, we don't. Get hit uh, that's why I said, yeah. yeah, there's more than enough to Pull. safely move it without scorching. Pull a Cindy, please. <laughs> All right, so you do that. All right. And it needs to make a constitution save, I believe. Constitution, yeah. And uh, roll your damage. DC, roll your damage. let me find it. God, I keep losing my spells. Just cast the spell. <laughs> so it's for... it saves. And so that's six. Six, all right. So it kind of grumbles being under this beam, but it does save, so there you go. Uh... Oh. uh Okay, so anything else for your turn? Bonus action, anything else? Um, don't think so, so... Alright, so with the crossbows, reload it. Uh, Leroy shoots. Another one! Oh no! He hits. For nine piercing. 
Now it's Jim's turn. You better stay up until my next turn, because I'm so pissed right now. Well, we'll see. For All right, that brings it directly to zero, so it needs to make a five or better. Oh, wait, wrong person. All right, yeah. It, both of them hit. It starts to shamble to its knees, and then it raises back up. Similar to how the other ones have been doing it. And it is walking around with one HP. Arr, draft horses are staying. Gideon, hey, it's your turn. What do you want to do? Good. I'm going to slam into this thing like a midget freight train. Arr, so you stomp your way past everybody. Get up to the zombie. That will hit. Making it damage. That brings it to fort, so it has to roll 19 or better to stay alive. Oh, it'll and make it. The undead whack-a-mole thing is a... Not this time. You managed to... S or how do you want to do this? Yeah. Uh, could I turn his ribcage into a soccer ball and just, you know, flail well, a golf ball, technically, like, take it out, and then it flings off into the fort somewhere? So, like, you're going <laughs> to swing towards the mid of its ribs and then just slam its head to the base of its waist or something? Is that what I, I, mean? I figure the head might go with it, but I just want to take the rib cage out and fling it off into the forest. So what you do is you arc your pickaxe back, and then you slam it across it, and you catch the spine. You rip through the spine. You pull the rest of the meat that's with the zombie, and it kind of rips off the top part of it, and it just kind of tumbles and splits in half and falls to the ground off to the left of you. And you're left there as the rest of its bottom half just kind of and splatters into a dust. Everybody looks around. Uh, we can do one more perception check if you want, if it's on your turn still. Yeah, I'll, I'll look, because I still have a little bit of movement. And the extra attack, if I, you know... So you can you're, get huffing a, you're huffing, you're know, huffing. I've got 15. You're ready to fuck something else up. That seems to be it. And you guys are now officially out of initiative, as the threat seems to have faded. I do have perception, since I have eyes of 120 feet. It is still your watch, so by all means, yes. 13. You look yeah. everywhere. The moonlight kind of... Oh, that, that's a little bright, but after after Ryder finally dispels it, maybe? Yeah, I'll dispel maybe. it. Yeah. yeah. Alright. It disappears, and then you look around again, and all the threat seems to have been eliminated. You have a bunch of ashen corpses in front of you now. Some of them still have some solidic body, but other than that, they all look like they're torn to bits. Pat's kind of walks up to one of them and kind of sniffs it over, but other than that... It's no good. So uh, they turned to dust, right? Some of them did. I'm... Some of them maintain their... Like some physical form, but not like fully enough to be a threat. Like they're not alive. Yeah, like some dust. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So put in like an empty file. You have a file of undead zombie, zombie dust? dust. Yeah, zombie dust <laughs> in a vial. Something of that nature. You never know. You might be able to make something with necrotic energy because of this. Got to be creative. Gideon's going back to bed and is saying so. Be I'm already asleep. Alright, so Gideon and them are going back to bed. The watch was 10 minutes in. That was the threat you detected on your watch. You managed to pass another two hours. Twilight, twilight hour passes away, so the visage of all of the uh, ruins that you've seen just fade. Like, they're gone because you can't see them anymore. Even though it's through the ethereal plane, it's like there's like this moment that, you know, it goes back to being normal. Like, this seems still, like, in the ethereal plane, it must be doing something there as well. But now that the twilight hour has passed, you no longer see these ruins. And the path that led up to wherever is no longer there as well. I'm going to go by the, uh, the two others that are helping the guard. Okay. Tell them, uh, keep a steady watch. They're coming not just one way over them. Aye. That's some good work we all did, right? And they're just kind of looking for validation. Uh, yeah. 
I'm going to be looking at the uh, the trail. I thought you said the trail disappeared. Yeah, the trail disappeared after an hour. Okay. Unless you wanted to do that before, I like I said, interrupt my no, narrative no, if there's no, something no. you wanted to do. And I have a reason for them to stay vigilant at the moment, so I didn't want to go. So, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, so as the twilight hour passed away, the light just disappeared. The path is gone. You don't see anything. It's just normal forest in the road. But things back to normal. Your watch comes to an end, and nothing further happens. Before we wake Ryder up, I'm going to tell them I will be watching you, and all of the eyes on the cloak start to look at <laughs> Make an intimidation check? Alright. Understood. And you can go to bed, and I will wake up Ryder. Alright. As you get ready to wake up Ryder, would you all care for a five minute break? Mm, that actually wouldn't be the worst idea. Yeah. I'm going to use the restroom, grab a drink. You may do the same. Be back at five. We'll pick up where we left off. So feel free to take five, guys. Good session so far. Hello, hello, whom does the bell toll? Alright, I think everybody is still on break. So Machi is muted at the moment. Okay, welcome back. Never left. Good to hear, good to hear. Um, and yeah, I, I don't care if I roll the inside of natural 20 on the guy I am not trusting no that's perfectly fine you're allowed to feel however you want but like if you're wanting to discern like we, the we just killed the guy's brother the, the revenge could be done at any time at this point that is true
That is a fair way of thinking. I, I believe I would do the same. many wonderful things can we get into welcome back still wish we could fix Thank that you. echo on your end sorry i i'm working on getting a new like you know pair of headphones in the standing cool but that still probably will take like a couple weeks oh no hurry But yeah, uh, everybody having fun so far? I mean... Yeah, that was fun. I didn't expect zombies. Well, you could have been worse. Mm, true. But that is one of your first experience with the Ethereal Bleed, I think. For you, anyway. Yeah, first for me. Yeah. And this here... It's an ongoing story plot, but it's like nothing you have to literally follow. Like, unless you make this your mission to seek and search and actually be a Ghostbuster, this is something you probably won't delve into. No, we're on, gonna turn into the Ghostbusters. Not, not on purpose. And it's not like I was making a scenario for like actual Ghostbusters, but you know, in a sense, like uh, if I you want to. No, I know. I'm just yeah. saying, like, if you want to go in and find out more. I mean, it could become a permanent plot hook, but that's up to you guys. I'm not going to make you go down it. And I just think it's an extra flavor to the world more than anything. And I named one of these guys to see if they would actually do a Leroy Jenkins. Oh, <laughs> uh. yeah. Since they got the light I should ask you to... Yeah, they kind of stay back. I should ask if their last name is Jenkins. Never know. Are we all back? Yes. Welcome back. Razor, you're still with us? Oh, it's gonna be a couple hours. Alright, well, too bad. Your character died. Rich. Var. Well, you realize if Var disappears, it's Ryder and Gideon. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I know. And I. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, that's, a, that's a bad combination. Yeah, I, I still don't know how to read. Speaking of Ryder, like smoking in an oil rig, it's it's bad. Ryder, you've been awakened. You have the rest of the watch. What do you want to do? Oh, it's finally my watch. It's finally your watch. Uh, Bar toasts these guys to. I got my eye on you, and he did his little eye trick. And they like, all right, and they took a place to roll up their bed rolls and sleep, or you know, roll out. And Bar woke you up. And then he went to his bed. All right. Um, for my watch, I will turn into my giant wolf spider form. Make a perception check as a giant wolf spider. I don't have the character sheet. I mean, I have the. I guess I'll make a d twenty no, no, roll no, 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 plus. No, no, no. Uh, wolf spider. Is it all one word? Yeah, it's it plus all? giant wolf spider. All right, giant so wolf spider. Yes. So here's what it's we do. a plus three. Do this. I, I know what it is. Oh, well, just because you know doesn't mean I can't give you the actual stats. Give me a second. Jeez. Chill, chill. All right. chill. I'm chill. 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 Right. I'm chill. chill. I'm right. so you... chill. Yeah, you need to I'm be able literally to get the... Don't change anything about it, but you should have a giant wolf spider in your journal now. I do. So, perception plus three on it. Or actually, you can roll your perception since it's based off your your in ability. Ah, uh, true. I had the wolf spider sheet up, so I gotta get to mine. 
can... I'm not at disadvantage, at least, because, you know, I now have... Oh, hey, look, I see everything. For the rest of your watch, you see everything, and... See the animals. You see the owls up in the trees, just... Woohoo! Woohoo! And then you kind of do, like, spider things, walking up the trees, and just kind of taking advantage of slinging around... For the most part, you have a pretty fun watch just enjoying your spider form and then eventually drop back down. Either drop your form before everybody else wakes. But it is now 7 in the morning. Everybody's slowly waking up. And, you and we get all our stuff back. Yep, you have succeeded in a long rest. So, even the horses are healed. Even the zombies you killed are healed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> also, by the way, I am still bright pink, and I'm a bright, pe uh, bright pink and green spider. That's obnoxious. Yeah, you know what's going to yes. happen, right? What? Maxwell opens his eyes, he sees a spider. He jumps to his feet and he raises both scimitars and a dagger. And he's like, Spider! And he wakes everybody up in camp. And the two goons beside him jump It is morning up. now, right? Yeah, it's morning. It's daybreak. You can see the day of light. And on, you don't see Ryder anywhere. You just see this giant wolf spider wandering around the camp. And the bandit leader is like, I'm going to kill it! And he starts running after you. <laughs> Not if I get it first. I jump away really quick, you know, like, you know, attack basically doing... That's an attack uh, of no, opportunity. Like a full, I was basically doing a full retreat, you know, I forget what the action is, but it's then I would disengage. turn into... Yeah. <laughs> basically disengage and turn back into my normal form, falling off the front of the cart. And, you know, the yeah. bandit leader jumps on top of the cart, and he's chasing after you with Bar or Gideon next to him, and he's like... And then you turn back into... Right uh, back into uh, yeah. What? Uh, Where'd the spider go? Did you see it? As he kind of gets over it, the things that are in the way of the front bench. That spider was me. Why in the bloody hell would you be a spider when people wake up? I, I didn't notice you waking up. I mean, I did notice, but I didn't think it would mind you. I don't know. Why I not? don't know what Why you can do. Why would you do that? I don't know what you can do. Maxwell has a point. You... Big spiders are good for squishing. <laughs> Gideon, you've seen me in my spider form? I don't think he has. Uh, I guess maybe you wouldn't. Yeah, no, I've been no. in the spider form before. Back in the very beginning, like when we went into the cave where everyone was still alive and we still had, you know. Didn't you use the spider form to get the hell out? Because I was behind the party in that. It was me and Visser. Oh, no. You know. It was while we were going in. I turned into a spider form while we were and going in. And you expect in. me to remember it, this? I don't know. I, was, I don't remember. I, I was I the DM. Was, I was back there with you and Wizard. So. Anyway. At any rate. Yeah, so... Fun and excitement oh, dies down. Idea. Yeah. don't care if we remember... <laughs> I don't no. remember it, so I don't remember it. It's like, how, okay. how do we know it's the same one? I mean, you just look like a generic wolf spider. Well, but she you... said she was brightly colored. But yeah. I'm really like, it, it's still, it, it's freaking weird. Yeah, it's still weird. It, they just woke up, and the bandits didn't know, so they were going to fucking kill you. Because <laughs> they thought a fucking spider I was going to help them. Their, yeah, that, all here yeah, was spider. Yeah, no. But yeah, so that's Did the you, morning fun. So, <laughs> that yeah. was the morning fun. You guys managed to pack up all your stuff. And you're ready to continue the journey. Is there anything you want to do before you guys hit the road, or are we just heading out? I can. I'll turn into a giant spider again and then jump and, on them. No. And then they no. will fucking no. kill you because you are no. being stupid now. Roll an intelligence no. check. <laughs> no. All right. Now we know you're joking. We managed to get back on the road. We start making our way further west. Uh, for Onward. this. Onward. Yeah, so unless there's anything in particular you guys want to talk about, do as you're traveling. Um, I won't be watching the bandits, but this time the swords will not be on. Alright, so you're giving them a little leeway. Not too much, though. Alright, so what I need now 
is a perception for the day as you're traveling. So whoever wants to make it and you can get help on it if somebody wants to help you. I'm assisting whoever does. So Ryder's kind of guiding the carriage along with whoever wants to make the perception with advantage. I'm just going to tell them what forms uh, that I know I can take. You know, giant green spider, the elk, black bear. I kind of look at Gideon and the Maxwell. Uh, don't, don't turn into a fucking spider. I don't care what color you look like. I don't care if it's you. I'm gonna kill it. You hear me? Ugh. Hate spiders. Gideon said spiders good for squishing. I agree. You said it, boss. As you kind of go throughout the rest of the day, making this little trip with this conversation taking place, uh, there is a well-groomed speckled horse with a very nice bridle tied to a nearby tree as you kind of come up closer to it. Uh, the horse is fitted with an elegant but empty saddle. Do I see anyone nearby? You can make a perception check with advantage because of your eyes, but does that work well in daylight? I, it doesn't say eight or nine. It just says advantage. Okay, just the spells. Okay, if yeah. using sight. You don't see anyone nearby. Like instinctively looking around. Hello. Hey, if, if we're gonna stop, I'll pass B speech and talk to the horse. Right. Yeah. What do we want to do? No, it's up to you. What do you guys want to do? You do have this fine-looking horse tied off here. Yeah. If you tell me to stop because we want to talk to it, I will. You gotta tell me because I'm not I fully paying. What'd you say, Bar? I was just going to take it. Do you say that? I'm out gonna loud? ask if it. Do you say that out loud? Uh, I'll say it in half. <laughs> say it to what? Half? Oh, to them? Okay. Yeah, so half you're half half So Bar's like. Take Sh it? Should we just. Or, or, do you want to talk to it? Or. I ask if it still has owner, if owner died. Okay. All right. So you're. I'm gonna think to myself something this ornate. People were people would recognize this horse. I feel. Uh, I hit a button that I didn't mean to. I you on my mouse pad. There was some rocks that were about to fall on you, but you uncanny dodged. Just kidding. <laughs> In the middle of a forest, really. <laughs> Come on, Star. And now I know you're out to well, kill see, me. Well, see, I, I always have advantage on deck saves against traps I can see, but I didn't think the bear was a trap. It just kind of, that that's how it happened. Oh, yeah. So I wasn't worried about the advantage on it. No, no, you, you, yeah, you snuck up on that bear. Uh, but I was referring know. to when it fell on me and it died. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like, you had yeah, to... If yeah. I would have been taking damage from it, I would have... Yeah, that was more or less this burly thing just coming to top of you. Like, maybe you would have taken one or two points, but you're, you're strong, you could power out of that no problem but yeah you kind of spend time to do your ritual cast of the animal speak right speak mm -hmm. with animals all right and then you're finally attuned to be able to speak with the animals and the horse is there just kind of chewing on grass looking up every so often hello there uh hi how are you i'm good I'm curious why you don't have a person near you, though. I this has been a dangerous road. It is? I did not know. Um, I was parked here. For how long? I don't know. How long is long? Have you slept an entire night and no one been here? Oh, no. Like... The sun hasn't even reached its peak. Like, I was parked here before the sun. Or not before the sun was up, but I was here during the sun. So like, he's been here since this morning. Someone has obviously tied him up and... Yeah, yeah. So it's not like he's been here for a whole day. But since it's a horse who's not have a good concept of time, he just knows that, oh, the sun was up whenever I was parked here. So your owner just went off in the woods somewhere? Hmm. 
yeah, the any kind of owner being really your, your writer, I guess. Yeah, yeah, the know, person or... who was writing. He's like, yeah, the person who was writing me went in that direction. He kind of shakes his head towards the interior of the forest. I don't know exactly where they went, but I was just going to graze here for a while until they came back. Okay. It just seemed a shame to leave you here if someone wasn't taking care of you. Oh, well, thank you for that. Plenty of grass here. I'll be fine. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> He's just continuing. Are y'all back to Bar and Halfling? He's got someone that owns him that's off in the forest hunting, maybe. Did he say how long they would be? Well, how long have we been traveling? Mm, I would say you guys had about two or three hours on the road. Um, matter of fact, you probably came to the crossroads so, uh, and made your way starting north. So I would say like this is like a little ways north. Almost south of Belleville by about three or four hours. Yeah, well, so I'd, I'd go ahead and guess, I mean, then he's not been here for more than, like, three hours tops. Probably about time for owner to come back. Yeah, and the horse is oh, Okay. Alright, so, uh, what do you guys want to do? All this is taking place in Halfling. Okay. Um, I'll let everybody make a hearing perception check. What do my elven? Oh, wait, I'm not an elf. They they hear nothing since you're not the right race. No. Um, our halfling ears here. Your halfling ears here. What may be near here is a waterish fall. Link somewhere in here, like in a lake. Uh, just kind of glancing further north, you can kind of hear like a small, not like a huge waterfall, but like maybe a three foot drop waterfall just kind of spilling into a lake nearby. So you're hearing like the rush of water just kind of filling into a lake or pond or bulge in the stream or whatnot. Like, if you wanted to go investigate, you may certainly do so, but you just kind of catch the sound of water nearby. Yeah, let's go see who owns this horse. <laughs> oh, and... so we're going to go visit someone bathing, maybe. maybe. Probably. Yes, yeah, so let's go see this owner. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going... Uh, uh, Okay, I'm gonna do this one more time. <laughs> you can't make up your mind, can you? What do you want to do? I can't Mark? get it to roll a yes. <laughs> why don't no, you just, I rolled a yes. Why don't you just say go. yes and go? You know, okay, like, then no. I, I'm no. I, let, let's just lead the horse then. That, as far as Mar is concerned, let's lead the horse. I walk into the forest towards so, the sound. Anybody else following? I get on the carriage. I'll stay with the bandits. Say, Bar Bar's not going anywhere, and Bar and the bandits say, "If you want to go, I can catch up." I say, "But I want to go see this." All right. So this Ryder. is Ryder's adventure. I got to go hunting. Ryder's gonna go get dead. As you go, I'm not gonna you... die. No, no, no. You... Well, you I want to stealth. You're gonna stealth. All right, make a stealth check as you kind of. Brush Why your does back. my sheet keep doing that? Because I try to open my sheet and it doesn't fully open up. Uh, there we go. You can shift, double tap your token to bring it up as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. It's all my little shortcuts uh, I have to use. <laughs> so, roll me so, stealth. Oh, yeah, stealth. Oh, nice. So, yeah, there's a small little waterfall leading into like a small like pond and as you get closer you look down and you see on top of a stone that's kind of like the beach of this lake like this thing there's some robes and yes there is a figure that is currently swimming near the waterfall and then she she he it they 
They kind of turn their attention in your direction. They roll the tie on your 18. And you hear a female elven voice scream out, Who's there? I fall out of a tree. <laughs> How far did you fall? Well, we're about to find out. This is important in this campaign. Sure is. <laughs> as you fall to the ground, you take three points of bludgeoning damage as you kind of you slam punch? your butt on the rock on the ground. She quickly swims towards her robes and kind of like brings them towards her chest as she slowly rises out of the water. Riders a female. Yeah, like, yeah but she doesn't. Bad. But she doesn't know who the hell did this, and she's like, "Who is this?" Uh, sorry for sneaking up on you. I was just uh, uh, hi. How are you? Who are you? Hi, my name is Ryder. Raya Ryder. Um. Well met. I'm just traveling. She puts her clothes back on. I just thought I'd have a chance to take a quick, quick morning bath before I head out. Uh, yeah. So uh, we found your horse out at the thing. We I thought that maybe you know it's still there. He right? was there alone, but there, right? yes, he's st- he is still there. Uh, Good. It wouldn't have been that hard to look for a pair of nads. Saying. I, I, I don't know. Oh, on the horse? I mean, if, who pays attention? You're right. You might know just because you were talking to it, but yeah, she, but what does it matter? It's a horse. It's, it could have been he, she, who knows. But he, she's like, um, thank you? She's just kind of being <laughs> wary of you. Like, she's fully dressed in her robes now, and she's just kind of like getting the rest of her vestige together or whatever it is she has. Um, you see her pull on a gray robe cloak and she's pulling this silver cord around her waist you're very pretty she pulls part of her blondish hair behind her elven ears they kind of pick you know they stick out but she then folds the hood of the cloak over her head and just kind of says uh, thanks sure I'm um here. I, I, where are you traveling to I must head back to Shandora. I have to make it to Pearl Nance. Alright, what was that? You got out on my end. Um, she's going to Shandora. It. Yeah, she has to go to Shandora first, and then she's heading her way over to Pearl Lance because she has to go through Shandora to get there. Um, uh, alright. I mean, what? Uh, uh, I don't know what to say. <sighs> she is still kind of gauging you to see if you're a threat or whatnot and uncertain you can see her like also lowering her frame down to the ground and she picks up this staff that's been kind of like hitting under the bushes and she comes up she's not being threatening with it but she does present it out towards you so that you know that she has it if there's nothing else you need to talk about we you we mind I, I would like to leave now of course I'm not keeping you here I was just seeing what was over here. I mean, heard the waterfall. Wanted to see if you or if someone was. Yes, well, it's a nice place to bathe, and it's very relaxing to hear the sounds of the water crashing against the waves there. You may use yeah. it if that's what you're here for, so if you'll excuse me, she starts to walk past you. Uh, she kind of stops, oh, kind noticing of. you still on the ground because you haven't gotten up at this point, I take it? No, I would still be on the ground. She'll offer a hand down to you. I'll take it, and she, if she, you know, helps me up, but yeah, I'll follow help. her back yeah, towards, because that's where they are. Felatina. Felatina. Felatina's my name. A pleasure, writer. And then you see this elven woman come out of the woods with the staff in her right hand, and then she just kind of guiding. Rider out as she kind of heads over towards the horse. Oh, and these must be your friends then. Yes, that is. I mean, if you want to introduce yourselves, I point at Rider, or yeah, not Rider. I point at Gideon. Then. Social life, did you steal? You have a nice horse, lady. Thank you. Thank you for not taking it. And she kind of looks at the bandits in the back of your wagon, and you know, even though they're disguised. <laughs> The idea of them looking... They look rough. Yeah, they right. look threatening. Yeah. They're definitely still painting a picture of, like, I don't know who these guys are. 
especially with masculine. Well, and I'm more. not. Yeah, and you, but you're 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 already being vocal. So she's like, "You sound nice." And she'll say that you all sound real nice. So Gideon. All right. Well, if that's all, she kind of goes towards her horse, undoes the bridle, and she starts to mount up. It was a pleasure. Um, I'll be on my way then. Here, take this. I'll grow a flower out of my staff and give it to her. A little white, like, lily flower. You're a strange one. Very well, thank you. Uh, I'll be on my way then. I think I wasted enough time here. And with that, she kind of yells her horse. And with the last bit of a... Uh, Bye, lady. Yeah, your animal... Speak with animal. You can kind of hear the horse saying, "Finally, we get to go somewhere fun." <laughs> and he's just, you know, so it seems like he's been bored there for about an hour or two. Who knows? But he's grazing. You know, he's done grazing. His ladies came back, and she is riding back towards the way you guys came. That was interesting. And you can hear the guys from the bandits just kind of whispering between each other. Oh, I'm curious. Yeah, you can make a perception check to hear him if you like. Or passive if you got it. And passive's 14, but I'll roll to see if I get better. I do. There you go. I've been rolling pretty well tonight, all things considered. Yeah, and you get the basis of, like, they're just kind of like man talking. It's like, oh, that was one pretty fine elf there. I wonder what was underneath them robes. You know, you just get little snickers of curiosity of what what they could have done with her if, if, if it was just them on the road and then you know it's like well we're in this situation now so I guess we gotta start thinking differently boys that's pretty much the gist of their conversation uh, I'll write up next to him and just sort of whisper doing stuff like that's how you get in jail again yeah yeah <laughs> we weren't saying anything no we weren't gonna do a thing <laughs> All right, boss, don't worry about it. We know, we know. And they kind of put their hands up, like, protestingly. He's like, it's fine. But, um, yeah, you guys... Gideon had good ears. Gideon know what you said. Mm hmm We've been Gideon... I wonder Gideon... what would have happened. Yeah, they like, yeah. Oh, we've been Gideon again. <laughs> what were you saying, Ryder? wonder what happened if, like, Gideon or Bar had been, uh, over there. Well, Naked elf lady. They probably I mean, wouldn't fine. have gotten caught. <laughs> that's, hey, that's not necessarily true. Well, yeah, they, there was a wrote, chance I would have been caught. Yeah, like, yeah, I'll, but I'll, Bar I'll should, that. yeah, Bar sh shouldn't have been able to. But like, uh, shouldn't. Why don't you roll a stealth check? We'll see how that would have went. Just to be curious. But um, <laughs> she rolled an eighteen, so that's the DC. I would have uh, tried. Nope, she would have seen Bar or Gideon, but Bar she would not have seen. Yeah, the DC was 18, since that's what she wrote on Perception. But, uh, yeah. No, you found an elven woman who was, like, trying to get a bath in before the day fully began, and I guess she got lost in time there for a minute, and then all of a sudden you snapped her out of her, you know, sticking around here for a while and get clean, and then she's like, a time to go. <laughs> Do you know the I name Felatina? Does that ring a bell to any of you? Never heard of her. Maybe if I was not me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of you would have. I mean, the one distinct thing that she, she might have recognized is her garments. Relating to a certain location in this game. Yeah, the Arcana with the silver cord? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep, that's the only You're thing. So you knew for a fact after thinking about, it, oh shit, that was a mage. She could have fireballed me or something. I'm a nice I person. I was not at all afraid of a fireball. I know at that you're point. not, but if if he if if Ryder was over there by themselves and talked south for a good while, there's no telling how that confrontation might have turned out. The next thing you know, you might have seen another toasty. Rider wandering out of the woods and you're asking, oh, what did no. you do? What did you do? Drop another torch down a tunnel? I mean, but no. No, I, apparently I, I made a mage, man. You did, yeah. Don't want to do that, but 
currently, yeah, you just saw this female elf just get dressed, get back on her horse, go on her happy way. And the horse seems to be excited to finally be moving again. And now you guys are ready to be moving again. So like I said, you're about, you made it past the, the, the crossroads. You're making your way north. You know for a fact that if you put in the effort, not really effort, I mean it would take you maybe a good eight hours from now to reach Mathfonica's gates. The only thing is we can get there today if we don't yeah, you know, yeah. stop 15 things. Yeah, and yeah, let's go. So another another eight hours pass. You guys have a midday lunch. You could probably eat and ride at the same time if necessary. But if you have rations, which you do, go ahead and mark one of those off for everybody that's there. Since you have the roasted bear, you might want to split it up with the bandits. And about, yeah. I would say about six shares of bear because I'm assuming I'm gonna feed pats too. I mean, I'll offer them good berries if they want. What's I've been keeping the... track of the bear, by the way. Yeah. Well, no, they want meat. It's like, keep your good berry. I want some raw <laughs> meat. Or, you know, not raw meat, but, you know, like, want some red meat. Red meat. Yeah, red meat. I got three-letter word. I was meat. close. <laughs> red meat's bad for you, I say, as I eat my own good berry. Get in and gain red meat. back good. my three health. I will eat three good berries to gain back one HP. <laughs> and you are full for three days, but it only lasts for one. It only lasts for one, it's whatever. Uh, well, I don't think you can eat. I don't, I don't know. Maybe you can. You can eat more can than eat one. Both. You can actually use them yeah. as healing sources. Yeah, yeah that's what I was doing. You can sustenance for one day if you eat just one. I'm not used to druids being around, that's all. At any rate, yeah, so you go ahead and eat all that. You're, you're good. And... About 6 p.m. rolls around, and you're in front of the very, very familiar city that you had some previous encounters with. Welcome back to Smathvonica. Uh, flashbacks. Before you reach the gate, are we doing anything in preparation of entering the city? I'll make sure my hair doesn't have any more tar marks in it. I mean, I wouldn't really have a reason to hide anything. Me and Gideon were kind of scot free. All right. Yeah, the, the hammer helmets might be shitty with us, but rather than that, like, I'm good. I mean, they, they don't have any evidence on us. They can be <laughs> Yeah, no, that paper trail is gone. So where do, where are you heading exactly as you make it into town? Same place as we did the first time. So, so you're going to River Helm. The hanging. So you Just make it back in. So you make it back to Riverhem's uh, stagecoach, and the old codger there, he's like finishing up with some customers, and he's like, ah, oh, you guys again. <laughs> Did me some services, but still cost me some time, but come on in, come on in. Just finishing up the day's business, and you could see him like walking out this couple, a young man and a woman. The guy's got like a top hat, he's all fancy dress, and the woman's in like a bell dress of sorts. They look like they're very fanciful folk who came out of a noble's district fresh. And he's like, this way, ma'am, my lady, and I'll take, you know, or my lady, and sir, I'll take you to your carriage. And there's like a carriage pulling up front and allowing him to get in. Uh, have a good day at the ball. And they start trailing down the road and south. Ah, now that that's done, he turns the sign that says open to close and welcomes you all in. I'm bringing the lads with me. Uh, see, you guys uh, got a, quite a few more in your number. Uh, yeah, just a few. They're they're made some friends here. on the road. Seem to recall you having someone with a uh, strange set of eyes and hair. Um, they decided they wanted to go. Yes. I they joined up with the Arcuna or Arcuna Matata. Yeah. That's what it's called, right? The Arcana. Uh, yes, that one. The Akuna Matata. <laughs> Shit. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, well, very well. All right. It's kind of sad seeing that I had to clean up a lot of his mess, too, but he's no longer with you, but whatever. Take it, you're here for the uh, infiltration, shall we say. 
saying it towards bar. Uh, yes. All right, then let Should me. We... Is everybody Should on the? Go... Is everybody here on the up and up? I should probably ask. What are we all. doing again? Uh, me our and three friends. Um, our three new friends are draftees, shall we put it? So they yeah, don't I'm need to know. To... They don't need to know everything, is what I'm saying. You know. I'm going to. Be He's going to go in. Me and him and point at Gideon. We know they. Not so much. He's going to start speaking in Thieves' Cant from here on, and he's going to hand you a package. And to those who don't know Thieves' Cant, you could just hear him talking about the weather and the mountains and the skies and how beautiful the area is. But in Revelation, you're hearing him say to the statement that here's the package that we agreed that needs to be planted inside the hill known as Helmerhammer, or your target is basically what he says instead of the actual name. Here's this you know pouch put it in the targets foot locker or some cabinet that he might not be fully aware to look and then there'll be some information that falls in the morning and then that'll be the end of it so it only needs to so so the weather only needs to last it yeah and you know so you get this package and you're like okay so yeah. I mean, you can tell me straight what you're saying, but they hear, like, you also talk about yeah. the weather. It only needs to stay where I put it for a day. No, don't worry. It'll be gone once we deliver the other information that reveals where it's at. Okay. And when he hands you All this right. pouch, it's heavy. Like, it's about... Uh, how would I say? Feels like a bar... Of metal and it's very heavy and it's like in this cloak rag uh, going to kind of out of curiosity just kind of look at it uh, yeah I guess that's all right and as you kind of fold the rag open a little bit you can see a little glint of gold or maybe it's platinum platinum's worth more seems to be like a platinum ingot. Okay. Just plant that in either a footlocker or a cabinet. Somewhere that may not be like super hidden, but somewhere where someone might hide something if they don't want it seen right away. Just by chance, is there anything happening in the uh, mines tonight? I mean, they've they're closing down for tonight's work other than that um, okay yeah I mean everything's on the up and up like there was damage to the third floor where most of the mining work goes on but they're clearing it out fortunately there wasn't anybody down there at that time it seems like it was close to a lunch break but for the most part it, it's going back to business now and he's saying I'm that still again. sorry for that Oh wait, you're saying that? Well, no, 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 no. They they came out of these cans. What I was gonna say. Oh, like, okay. After the business part was done and him talking about the mines, he opened up to normal speak. Unless you want to keep it in these. No. Yeah. So he'll say that in normal. But uh, yeah. Just take care of that. And come back. Let me know, and then you're free to go back to the shadow. Okay. And he'll also give you, like, the information to where this blacksmith's home is. So, basically, all you have to do now is, like, plan your infiltration. So, I already have a couple ideas. Alright. I really... Yeah, well, let's just go to the tavern. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you say, boss. And all the bandits kind of lining up behind you. All right. I have no idea what's going on. Leroy says, it's fine, Leroy. Let's just go. Uh, is there a leather worker here in town? I imagine. Unless I want to start using displacer parts, which I'm 
hoping I can save for eventual serious crafting. I do need to get some more uh, stock, as it were. Uh, so I would like to go... Uh... He's not in town. I mean, you have to go back down towards the main path. And there's a lodge that's out near the forest a little ways. So, you know, it's closer to the game. Because we're up here in the mountains, you understand, right? But uh, if you want to go to the source where somebody, like, tans pelts and... He usually brings them in to trade, so you can also check Helmer Hammer, or I would not want you <laughs> to go there, but. Gideon can visit Helmer Hammer. If he starts a fight, Gideon can fight. Hold on, let me. What time you, is you it? Really, you really shouldn't offer me a possible fight unless you're, you know. Okay with me walking in somewhere they might hate me. Or go to Cartwright Smithy and Minerals. They they sometimes have to use leather in like making sheets and such, so they might have some as well. What were you saying, Ryder? Uh what time I was asking what time it was like in the six, day. six in the evening. You okay, so shops are mostly Yeah, the shops open. closed. Most shops are closed. Like anything that's okay. like selling stuff on the streets, they're closed. But like vendors who might be like tending to the night crew might still be open. Like I mean, and assume... stuff like that. But... I'll go check cart race real quick. I'm assuming it's a hop, skip, and a jump in town. Uh, yeah, you could probably make it there before they close to the final customer. Um, so is that the plan for everybody to go to? I mean, I'll follow Gideon I need if to he's heading off Jim that way. Because their masks suck. Alright, Bar, what do you want to do? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and go because I'm looking to get a mask. Not bad. Well, you want one? Get I, I just want a mask. Just no, for something. Yeah, say something like that. Let him know. Yeah. Can you I'll make, make me a mask of a honey badger? Gideon make you a mask of a pussy cat. Oh, I am offended. I want you out of my shop then. <laughs> this is Riverham. <laughs> no, that, I'm saying, you know, like, after he told us, like, alright, like, I'm just, you know, walking towards the door, like, go to Cartwrights and check them. Yeah, they might be closing soon, but sometimes they work overtime if they got a project going. So, just so you know. And I will roll to actually see if they do have a project going. Yeah, they do. So you make it so over they there. they gotta fix up the damn mines. Yeah, yeah. They have going. So yeah, they might be putting, like, getting beams reinforced and with letter, you know, like, metal rivets and stuff like that. So you could definitely hear pounding of a hammer going up against the anvil as you make your way closer to the cart, right? Smithy you and Minerals. Tell. I'm going to tell Ryder to not come in with us, unfortunately, because they might start right. mad at them. Yeah, I'm fine with standing outside. And did you want the bandits to stay out with them, or...? I mean, they can do... They do whatever you want them to do. Uh, I just the, need to the, know the, where the they two, are. The two minions, quote-unquote, should probably come in that way. I can... I'll just, you know, I'm going to need, you know, two things of leather. I make two checks. I'm gonna need one more thing of leather. I make a check. I'm gonna need one more thing of leather. <laughs> so we're gonna stay here till you're done or out of charges. Uh, <laughs> or they're out of leather, which I don't assume would happen. Well, let's see here. Did we have a full rest? We did, didn't we? So you yes, we did. The, so it's, a, you, it's a new dawn. We're back to full. All right. And you are you aware of what full is? You told me five. Alright, I'll double check it here in a minute, but if it's different, I'll let you know. Alright, so you go in there with that intention. It's, i just trying to get everything kind of nailed out. But, um, yeah, let's see here. Smithers Mon, where did I leave it? There it is. I'll check what level 2 was. If I told you 5, then probably that's probably right. See, I didn't know if there were any weird things that happened with the leveling on it. Because mm -hmm. I don't technically know it leveled, I just know it's shown really bright for a second. I actually have six charges. Oh, okay, cool. I'll so, go ahead and fix that accordingly. Alright, so what we will do here, you go into Cartwrights, 
and uh, let me double check what this guy looks like because see this is a mineral outpost where iron steel silver and even gold have been known to be sold and manufactured as far south as Blackmore uh, this business is always in competition with the other two families who have similar business uh, it's run by Smiggle Cartwright a cousin of Marlena uh, he took over this shop a few years ago and did what he could to keep up with the fighting so you see this shrivelly looking guy he's like middle aged not really old old but you know he's like 25 to 30 somewhere in there and it's a human and he's got or dwarf I'm sorry these are dwarfs aren't they most of them should be I keep forgetting where I'm at yeah this guy's he's thin for a dwarf he's got this shaggy beard it's not fully coming in or it's got like patches that got pulled out who knows and he kind of notices you all coming in. Ah, oh, good day. Come on in. We're busy working on some materials, but I got times to hear you out. Uh, anything I could do for you? Actually, speaking of materials, I need to get some leather. Leather? That's a odd request to ask for people who deal with minerals. Uh, let's see what I got. Most everyone else was closed. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. I might have some scraps that's available here. Let's see what we have in the pool here. Uh, I got some deer pelts. Would, would that suffice? Almost any kind of leather would work. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. I could offer you up some deer pelts. You uh, plan on wrapping up something or making something useful? I'm, you know, kind of curious what this stuff goes towards. Uh, Gideon, make math. Oh, mass, that sounds quite interesting. Well, here's your go. You can go, um, he'll offer you, like, two large pelts of deer, and he'll tell you one goat for the wholesale. Say, so, how many mass can I get out of two pelt exactly? Cause... I will say you can make four tries, like two on each. Like, you can divide it in half and then use half and half to make the mask. Okay, yeah, that'll be fine then. Yeah, I think we can do that. I do that. carry plain gold in small amounts in the pocketbooks where the money's at. Alright, so yeah, you hand over a gold piece, get two large pelts. Well, that's my fine. Thank you, sus. Uh, is there anything else I can do this for you? Um, Were you gonna I still something? have a couple belt. And are they, like, okay, any other leather product I would feasibly be able to repurpose like I have belts for like the backings like strap them I don't think I need anything else really yeah you can use the crystal to manipulate like if the material can come all from leather then you can use it to manipulate unless you think you might need some metal pieces that, that's why I got the belts for buckles then yeah you'd probably be fine just making the checks so do we want to make the checks now or what are we doing uh, I'll go ahead and thank him for his time and walk out and to get back to our cart and I can actually sit down and try to touch the crystal to the leather alright so you're back at the cart now and you're going to go ahead and make these checks I'm going to attempt so go ahead and make me the first check Dex check. that's crap yeah you ruined one piece that one worked that one was good so we'll put you at that much um, I love crap is just below 10 like you know, it's it's slightly below oh, yeah. average pretty much so yeah you roll pretty good on that one uh what's this one look like well I was gonna continue with him you know I was gonna make like, more canine ish looking map so we'll say this looks like a bull because we've got a bull we've got a lion and this dude can uh, I don't know it can be like you know a pit bull style mask I guess. pit bull <laughs> okay I can go with that Okay. And I'll give that one to hell, I'll give that one to Leroy because why not? Okay, Leroy gets the pit bull, alright. <coughs> that was a seventeen year old pit bull man. Yeah, and it, it's very decent quality. Like this one here will cover the face like you want it to. You can barely make out any human features other than, you know, like the eyes and the nostrils with the nose. And the mouth appears. And I want to ask Jim if he has a favorite type of bird. Uh, bird? Uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, maybe an owl, I guess. I don't know. Hawk. Hawk. Let's go with hawk. 
works for me. All right. Because I've seen a hawk before. If he's gonna say something ridiculous, like, yeah, and then you know, big old thunderbirds I've heard about. Damn it, yeah. man! I don't know what those. Yeah, it does. All right. Oh, that's a nice one. So, what's this one look like? Uh, hawk. You know, with slight feather detail etching, I guess, and. I'm just kind of writing in notepad here. I'll have to try to remember to put it somewhere. But yeah, you definitely need to make sure you got it. I've, I've got them listed on my sheet. Yeah. yeah. I might make another sheet that's a handout that says something. Just for my own reference. But I'll keep looking at yours if I need to. Alright, so you make a hawk mask for Jim with feathery feathery details along the edges. And Otherwise, it's just going to look like this weird, you know, triangular face mask. you got to get the feathers in the beak so it looks like a bird. <laughs> so, yeah, he's got this nice-looking mask that covers his face. So now, what are we making? Uh, you got a half piece left? I've got a half piece, and I've still got a few scraps on my end I can use. Right. They're, they're small pieces. You know, leather, like not the small bear piece you gave me, but you know, like a small hide from a deer. Or... While you're uh, making, you know, the leather pieces, do you mind making a small mat? Uh, that was, I was going to make one for you anyway. You wanted it. Yeah, but I didn't know. Well, like, this is. Uh, this Bar is didn't the... actually ask. Yeah, so. Oh, uh, yeah, is... no. Yeah, this no, is I'll make the Bar mask because Bar got me the initial bull mask, so yeah, long overdue. What kind of mask does Bar want to tell him he wants? Like a half mask up to just covering the nose. Like a handkerchief? Like you just kind of pull over your face? Eh, kind of. It just, yeah. Well, I... No, what'd you say? I'm going to make you a Tokyo Ghoul mask. Have you seen that one? It's oh, something along like that line. So it looks like it's like not it's, as big. So it looks yeah, like, like, teeth, like a... across the front of it, you know. All right, so yeah, that sounds interesting. Go ahead and make a roll for that. Don't let me down. It's I'll not, take it. Not bad. Fairly good. Actually, I'll do this for the XP currently as you wasted another fourth charge, right? And this one here turns out to be like a ghoulish mouthpiece of a mask. Like it's got like the outline of a of the ghoul's bottom part of his mouth. Just too many it, teeth. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's what, uh, just too many teeth. That's the problem with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just looks, yeah, it just, and you can, like, I'm imagining it's like a handkerchief, you know, like triangular goes down and it's got that face mask and everything, and then you just tie it up around the back. Unless there's something I'm missing. I mean, you can make it however you want, but that's what I'm imagining. That's cool, but uh, kind of creepy, I say. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect, yes. Yeah, no, no headband and eye patch, just, you know, the bottom half of the Tokyo Gold Mash. A lot of teeth. <laughs> Alright. I didn't think you liked it. I was animal. kind of wanting something along that line. At the top right. Top right. Where? What's the top right? Top right of where, Cutter? Uh, the, the top right oh, of the Oh, okay. Page, he drew a really... Yeah. The... Wait, I moved you guys, didn't I? When do I get a mask? The next time we get some leather and you don't bitch about where it came from? That's a good point. I kind of saw it. Yeah. There you go. A bunch of teeth on it. <laughs> om nom nom. It was a suggestion for a jackalope mask where to drew it. <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, so you got a mask now. What do you want to do? At Maybe a yearling deer instead of a pussycat. The start of horns, but horns would be too ornate to really bother with. Give him an overall helmet. <laughs> kind of what I was thinking. Like, you Maybe know, obviously you not elk horns horn somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, we could. Yeah. But yeah, I think after we got that, does anyone else have anything else? Or 
No, I mean, I was walking out of the shop after that, but, you know, I, I got what I needed. Yeah, I'm probably going to head to the tavern until nighttime. Well, you're in luck. It's already going to nighttime. You can... It's about 7 in the evening. You reach the tavern. You want to partake in drinks, you may. Uh, if you want to make an order. So I want to get. I want to go ahead and get rooms real quick. Since... Yeah. Alright, so... Yeah. Let's say two gold will give you rooms for everybody and the bandits will bunk up in one room. And then either you and Gideon well, can pair if they up had or... like a multi-occupancy, like Swedish style room, you know, like, oh, like one you know, same middle room and then, you know... Yeah, then we could do that for two gold. Because then we're all still in like the same set of rooms. And you guys already had rations, but that two gold would also get you like a meal for the evening. And one drink. Like, they're not going to pay for you to have a, about a whole bunch of drinks all at once. But they'll pay for one drink if you want it to go with your meal. I'll, I'll put five gold on a tab just up front for drinks for the whole night. Alright, that'll definitely get you guys toasty if you wished. Or I will not be drinking alcohol. <laughs> so, yeah. So, nighttime. I drink a little. Alright, so... Sorry. No, you're fine, you're fine. Um, I'll have, I'll have an A with my meal. Like, I'm not going crazy, but... Define a little writer. Me? Yeah, what's your ideal of little? Probably like two drinks. Alright, yeah. two glasses. Alright, that's fine. And the bandits kind of like take up the rest of the tab and just get about four or five drinks each. But they're bandits. They probably got a good constitution. And I don't think you want to take them with you, right? Uh, the idea was to get them completely... I put five gold in the tab and you say an ale's the silver... Right. You know, after yeah, so, my ale, if Bar drank anything, like there's still 45 drinks so, for them to go through on their own if they really want to get that smashed. So then they can you, sleep it off in the room. If you're offering it, they will definitely do that. I'm just trying to get them out of the way, truth be told. Absolutely. <laughs> At least for this bit of the job. Then they're like, well, then let's have a challenge, then. What kind of challenge, oh? We'll drink each other under the table and see who's last man standing, Maxwell says. And Leroy was like, ha, 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 boss, I know you're pretty good at this, but I'm going to take you up on it anyway. And they all get these drinks ordered out, and they're all about ready to have their game. So you see them starting their drinking game, and they're trying to drink each other under. And about that time, about 10, 11 o'clock comes around. They're still rowdy as hell, and they're, they're sloshed. Uh, no, I'm going to be staying down there with them until it's time to go. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, you're witnessing. I don't think baby's thing. Like, I'll help them get up to the room and all. Yeah. Like to you guys, it's new life. You know. Yeah. <laughs> the spoils of new adventures. Mm -hmm. They're dragging up their last ale together, and they're all just they're sloshed as fuck. Like they they they. If they were able to get about two or three more down the hatch, they might actually be completely incapacitated, or possibly suffer alcohol poisoning. We do not know. But yeah, they they get very wasted, and they're starting to head upstairs, and it's about midnight now yeah well can when I, I get up to my room let's start going ahead. oh I was gonna ask could I if I could like put up my hood and ask around you know how the people of the you know in the mine accident you know how long ago was it like almost a week not even dude not oh even. no I would say yes it was about a week because you did a lot of back and forth travel between the arcana going to the okay, arcana yeah, travel. coming yeah. back it's probably been about a week and a half I would say a week for sure, yeah. So you're just kind of listening for rumors, uh, make an investigation check. I, yeah, I would ask her. I would ask maybe a couple, you know, the bartender or no, maybe it's... some people. Yeah, let's just do an yeah, investigation. Invest. Yeah. Um, the bartender will tell you. Well, it was a major catastrophe. Like the whole third floor has been kind of in caved and they're digging it out now but fortunately nobody was scheduled to work that floor at that time when it happened so god bless Kazia for watching out for us and Mirthvale for keeping the earth away from us and that's basically everything you can pick up I'm like it's nobody died so I mean it was still dangerous and the whole mine but, shaft could have crashed but god bless yeah but that makes me feel better yeah lightly and you hear them praising both Kazia and Mirthvale. Other than that. Thank good old Mirthvale for keeping us safe. And 
Kazia for keeping the winds calm for us to go in there and breathe our life through that dust. Yes, nobody died, so lucky us. I'll go over and go over to where Bar is. If he's still downstairs. As soon as we got to the tower, I'm going upstairs. So you've, oh, okay. been, you, you've been in your room this entire time? Yeah, I've been experimenting. All right, tell us what oh, we're doing. Yeah. So, my uh, amulet, I, I'm going to test some limits real quick. Or my, uh, gen okay, you're, is there a bucket there. of water in my room? I mean, you can get some water if you need it, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to bring a bucket of water up to my room. All right. So, I'm going to dip in my hand into the water and then use the gem to see if I can just, like, make a bunch of steam. Kind of like, you know, the steel uh, it all. boil it. Yeah. Like, instantly boil it. Uh, you know, just make them. Make, I will have you make an intelligence check for this. Can I use a lucky on that? Sure. You think about it, then you okay. think about it. Sure, it should work, right? And it's your intention. So now, chemistry set of some sort. Do you have a skill in chemical or? Uh, that alchemy. Yeah, go ahead that... and roll me an alchemy, and we'll see what we do. You try to focus on making it steam, but nothing evident happens the water becomes much clearer like it's in your hand right you're like picking the water up right or where are you putting the water when you do it well i'm just holding it in my hand trying to make steam appear out of my hand so you got this small little puddle of water in your palm right is that what i'm hearing yeah as you press the gym trying to you know make it do that it doesn't necessarily steam up or anything like that instead it just turns pure Ella. it just turns pure it doesn't steam it doesn't do anything like that now the way these crystals work they help you eliminate the process to get to the result that you're trying to get so technically you're trying to boil water which would distill it into like distilled water so basically you're holding a little puddle of distilled water in your hand yeah, I'm, I'm going to, uh... That still counts as a just, success. Uh, I'm just going to dump it out and kind of wipe the glove on my... So, All right. All right. Uh, yeah, that, that was uh, an attempt to have an instant smoke screen on or I won't. No, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't do that. Sorry. Now, remember, these crystals are to eliminate a process, not create certain scenarios. Oh, I... Uh, Getting water to steam would be, you know. Yeah, but then use then use fire. That's a process. You boil the water. This is to give you the end process without needing to do that. So the crystals are shortcuts, okay. even for that. So yeah, you don't you don't get any steam. It just gives you straight so, yeah, up distilled water. Useless. Yeah. Yep, totally. But you do. But you have learned. You have learned, and you have also gained a little XP on the crystal. So one the, the idea you, was, if we are seen just like sling a thing of water onto the floor and like you know it's, it wasn't a bad idea but this crystal doesn't do that like you could literally take like a fire gem perhaps or not not a fire gem but maybe a gem that does fire damage or something and then like focus it on the water and that would give you the result that you were looking for but no it's not on that high scale or the crystal is not right. capable at this level to produce in process okay. results I mean that's that's about as far as you can go with that reasoning Okay. Uh, yeah. It, you guys are in a room where you are all able to collect. So if you wanted to find Bar in his room experimenting, you can definitely walk in on him because you're all sharing the same room with different beds laid it's out. It's a suite, yeah. Room. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I would yeah. walk into Bar's, uh, find Bar's room. You know, knock before I go in. Obviously, the the door is open. I'm not really doing anything suspicious. <laughs> 
Uh, hello, FR. Yes? I wanted to talk to you about, you know, what we were doing. We need to, uh, plant that package. Uh, yes. I'll, I'll be saying this in, uh... Halfling? Uh, Halfling? Yeah. I was also, uh... Coming to talk about, you know, how we're going to do that. Oh, uh, well, you've seen a spider, right? Not, not the spider that you, that I've seen, but e e yeah, go yes, look in some I've seen closer. other spiders. Okay. I, I was uh, thinking you may be able to fit through a couple of cracks. Possibly. I also, but I was gonna bring up, I have a, uh, a, a technique that can make us more stealthy. Let's say it would add plus 10 to any roll, and if we were rolling a die. Pass without trace? Yes. I, I just recently figured out I had that. You do know your name or your spell, so feel free to use them. <laughs> yes, pass, it's called Pass Without Trace. It will make us really sneaky. Okay, that, that may be very useful. Uh, just for, if we're going to sneak in. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I want to back up just a half a hair here. How much would Ryder actually know about what you're actually doing? I don't really know because... I think I, heard, I was you there You were unaware of... I had it. We, we, we were talking at Thieves' Kent about what we were actually planning. But, Run back but, at you, the uh, you, you yeah. So know what that the we we are doing something stealthy. You probably know. Yeah, that's probably the extent of it. All right, no, no. I just want to clear it up just in case I forgot something. I just remember saying that I am okay with you know planting evidence on the Elmer hammers. I can handle. All right. So. Okay. They are kind of assholes. They are. What was that? No. What can I do? <laughs> God, I hope. You hear a Star, fight. don't threaten me with a good. Don't threaten me with a good time. Oh, I have to then. You hear a bar fight taking so, place downstairs, but that's up to you if you want to act. So the the plan is is that yes, I do. <laughs> that's the plan, bar. I will try to. The the plan is that we sneak inside, get in, can wait outside for a uh, for watch out and uh just in case if things you know turn to worse we will have an escape plan we can cover our exit wait who was gonna cover our exit i like gideon oh gideon yeah and then me and you can get into the uh building sounds as good a plan as any and you guys so, probably you, see Gideon leading the bandits into the room at the moment. So you, you can turn yourself into these beasts. Can you turn others into beasts? Um, one other person, maybe? I have, I've been, I've been able to do it. Yeah, I can change other people. Now I can, but only like once. Kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. That's what I was try getting at. Or getting. Yeah. And you see the three bandits getting put to bed by Gideon. And uh, Maxwell kind of pipes up and tells Jim, I think we've been Gideon again. <laughs> I'm just synonymous with feats of strength and <laughs> I guess nap time now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're tucking them in. That's what it looks like. So, yeah, they're like, we've just Pretty been idiot. Uh, I'm going to walk up to Gideon. Are you ready? Gideon ready. Yes. I'm so Gideon. The, what? The, 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 so you asked if Gideon was ready. Is it Gideon ready? Yes, the, I, I asked if you were ready. I'm saying I'm already a <laughs> dense motherfucker. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure about that? All right. 
So yeah, your team is ready. What do we want to do? Uh, let's go break the law. Break yeah, the law. go break to the building. The okay. Not, not go to the building. Go near the building. All right. So, so should we be stealthy on our way there or no? Because if we are gonna, I mean, be we're just walking around we're town just right walking. now. Yeah. yeah, so you guys okay. are just you it. enjoying the night air. Yeah. Ah, yes, and it is getting a lot colder. You're in the mountains. I'll have my hood up. Let me roll something you know. for like weather condition to see what we're dealing with. Now there's some, it's colder, so I. You see some hood, light so. flurries, some light flurries, but nothing like dramatic. As you do know, the winter months are coming. Gideon, don't give a damn. He's stolen uh, nothing but a mask. Yeah. You need a mask and a loincloth. He's perfectly fine in his weather. He'll be fine. And you make your way. You're about a couple of blocks from the house, and you know you can see it now. You're in a. You can either be in an alleyway, out in the open street, behind a street lamp. I mean, it's up to you how you want to approach. Okay, so get in. Where yep. are you at first? Here. Where are you at first? Oh, we are across the street at the best. <laughs> Okay, and do you want to be in an alleyway? Do you want to be tucked away, like, halfway through so you're not on the streets? Or do you want to be on the streets, ready to is jump? Is there an alleyway that has the building in view? Yes, yes, I would say there is. So you're, like, across the street next to a storefront that's right in front of it, and you're just in that alleyway. All right. Are they open? Oh, and no. Like, is it, it 24-7? Is, it, negative. Okay. It is pitch black. Like, the street lights are lit up by, like, incandescent little um, glow orbs. It seemed to like pick up that it's nighttime and they just kind of shift from on to off or off to on. So they're like kind of movement sensors? Or? Yeah, it's like drift globes that have been programmed to like when it's nighttime light up. Basically your street. Uh, okay, so, so they're just on. They, they won't turn on whenever someone's near. Yeah, they're on right now, but you guys are tucked okay. away in a dark alley, so you're not being seen at the moment. Uh, there, <laughs> there are no real movements on the street. There are a couple of guards that you notice maybe three or four blocks down, and you can obviously see them walking the street, but so far they haven't made their way up here. So it looks like they're doing a different approach at the moment. Like, if there's a patrol going on, their patrol isn't taking them across to this building just yet. So keep that in mind. So, okay, get in. I don't think we've filled him in on the plan yet. So get in if you hear any type of uh, ruckus on the inside come uh, try to bail us out and uh, otherwise keep watch try to keep people away from the door and whatnot you, you know the you get in kick you out okay all right so yeah going to just rider Follow me five, ten seconds behind me. I will yes, I have a like a cloth around my face that I stole from the the inn. I am going to just walk up to the door, look inside real quick. Make a perception check and a stealth check. Uh, I could do my uh, He's pass already without gone. a trace. He walked across the street guy. already. It's hard to see in there. I mean, you see a furniture that's kind of like up against the window, and then trying to look up over it with your halfling size, you don't can't quite make over what's inside fully. But yeah, you know, the shop seems to be closed. There's no lights on. There's no candlelight that you can make out anywhere. It's pretty dark interior, and for the most part, there are think, any other doors besides the front. Um, so you're gonna wander off to the back. I'll follow after him like 10 yeah. seconds, and I will, if I'm within 30 feet with them, cast pass without a trace. Alright, so you'll get a plus 10 on your pass. As he kind of catches up, riders like, pass without a trace, and then you move towards the back. Now make a new stealth check as you change location. I'll make one as well. One at two. Okay. Is that what the uh, plus 19 at least. Yeah, he doesn't wait, get wait, that was a disadvantage. Yeah, I don't have advantage. 
Well, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. two numbers. We take the highest or the first one. The first one on the left is what counts. If it's a straight roll and you roll with advantage or disadvantage, the first number always counts, not the second. So don't worry about it. That's why I leave advantage on. It doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah, for the most part, you think you're still... Well, let me double check again now that you change location. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, no movements. The patrol seems to be at the distant end of the street. Uh, Gideon, can I get a perception check for you as you're kind of keeping a lookout? Uh, you most certainly can. All right. Make sure I don't have anything crazy on. No. Ah, as my browser stops responding for a second. Browser. Oh, there it goes. Alright. Um, not the best you can make out is that this guard is kind of like walked out of your view on the far end of the street. And you turn towards the other end and you don't see anything apparent. Uh, streets look pretty empty for the most part at the moment. So, yes, there is a back door uh, bar. Is there a crack anywhere in the wall or where the door hinges or somewhere? Uh, yeah, you can try to make a perception check with disadvantage. I'll help him. You can't help him. <laughs> can you, can't? you technically can't help him because, one, you never said you went to the back with him, and two, it's a perception I, check. I'm following him. You he did say he was following. But you can't he's help also him a see. Away. Yeah, you can't help him see into this tiny crack. The okay. disadvantage is not going to be changed. I, so I it's, didn't know. Cause yeah, it's still this, still disadvantage. It's dark inside. You really can't make out much. Of it. But yeah, it's just pitch black in there. And there's no discernible candles. There's no source of lights. I'm not so looking like, inside. Well, you're, where are you looking? You're looking at a crack going in, right? For cracks. Well, you see cracks. That's obvious. For, and that's like what the I... Cracks in the wall that will, like, the, just, that will allow air to go in, I guess. Well, what, whenever you say cracks by the door, I'm assuming, like, the door is a little bit shorter. No, I'm not the looking frame. in. All right, I'm just saying, like, the, if you wanted to, then, in this case, the frame has enough crack in it, but it's not, like, it's not flush with the door. But there's no obvious cracks to where you can, like, pull a board off? I don't know what you're aiming for. Tell me what you're aiming for so I know what to tell you. Okay. Well, when Ryder gets here... Okay, you're looking, you're looking for a miniature entry point then. Yes. Okay. That's what you should tell me. And then, yes, you yes. assume... Oh, oh, that was the way, obvious. Obviously, I don't know because I'm like, you're making perception checks or that's what I was on right then. So I didn't know, obviously. So, yeah, bring it back up so I remember. But you come to the back and the hole in the door that's not flush with the wood, like the wood's not flush, so there's that crack I mentioned. Like you can use it to look in or you can use it to send something small through. Yes, you can do that. Okay, uh, yes. Ryder, could you turn into a spider or ant one and go through that crack right there and uh, if you, uh, how about this, if you see anyone climb up my left leg, if you don't see anyone climb up my right. I might have a conflict of interest here. Now, bear with me. Now, he's right. concentrating on Pass Without a Trace. Is that a concentration? And does yes, B-Shape it is. force you to stop concentrating? It does not. B-Shape does not. Very well. All right, just wanted to double check. So going on this it, it'd be polymorph if he was going to polymorph that would mess with yeah. it. Yeah. All right, then by all means. That's, all right. That's cool. All right, just one check. I'll like I said, don't have dirt in my campaigns very often, so... I'll turn into like a small spider, like a, I don't know, but small spider that I probably. Alright, so you turn into this spider, and he like, what are you doing with him? I have one hit point. What's what's the plan? He turned into a spider for you. Uh, I was gonna go inside, I guess, like through a small crack. So you go through the crack. Um, let me look up spiders for us. While he's doing that, I'm checking the door for traps. Okay, you make an investigation. Hey, don't, don't check till after he's in, though. Yeah, he's in. Um, spider has a stealth check it can use. You have 1d4 minus 1 HP. We'll just say you have 1 HP. You have a 20-foot 
climb and a 20 foot movement speed so you you move at 20 so start making your way in you um make a see you have dark vision up to 30 feet as a spider and as you look around oh, okay. you notice you're kind of like in a kitchen area um Yeah, this is his house. So yeah, you're at a kitchen area where there's like a island table where people can like fix foods. There's a stove off to one side, uh, a storage case off to the other, uh, something like a door that leads to a pantry perhaps. Um, you're scudding across the floor. Are you doing anything in particular? Are you heading some direction? What's the, what's the general? Idea? Uh, I'm looking for people. Like, is there anyone or anything around? I'll... All right. So for the first couple of rounds, it takes you to go into this kitchen area, and you can either go into the pantry through the crack of the door, or you could turn left and go into like an open area that leads to like maybe a dining room. And then from there, you can, like, make your way towards a living room and a stairwell that kind of goes up. Well, I'm just looking around the... Yeah, the, just the yeah. first floor. If it's, like, the first bottom floor, I'd double move, you know, all yeah. around for yeah. a little... Yeah, you're scurrying around. Um, make a stealth check. Stealth check. That is a plus four in my spider form. Plus fourteen. And tell me the number. That's a 26. 26, alright. Alright, you're Oh, it's a cat. You see, like, as you're scurrying around, you can see this cat that's just kind of nestled up against a window seal. He doesn't seem to notice you. Hmm. I will go back towards the door and wait. He said, "Climb up on his right leg." If there's something there, or if there's a person there, instead of someone. Well, I'll crawl up onto his one of his legs, probably his left. So you feel this scurrying of a spider up at the left of your side. Hey, no one's in there. I'm going to uh, go ahead and check the door for traps. Right, make an investigation. I don't think I rolled for that yet. No, I kind of have could... 23. Not trap, but it is locked. Okay, then a lock figure then. Alright. So make your thieves tools. Ooh, I was about to say I could unlock it from the inside, but I don't need to. I'll stay spider click. form. Yeah, click. It unlocks. I'll just be on your shoulder. Like, I get up to your shoulder. And you kind of creak the door. Make a stealth check as you enter. The door kind of starts to creak, but then you, like, slow its movements down to be quiet. And then it just... Uh, and you're able to let yourself in. Hey, so need to find somewhere where he's not going to see it until at least tomorrow night. I am going to. I'm going to look through the. We're in the kitchen, right? Yeah, you. you it's. Dark. I can't really look at the top drawers because I'm a halfling. You can't really see much in here. It's like it's not like it's pitch black, but with the lights from outside giving you dim light, you can barely make out where. Like everything is. Rubber vibes. I'll oh. set an anchor on bar and then jump off him to the floor. No, okay, this is rubber vibes. Let you see dark vision as well. Dark vision, ethereal plane, one twenty feet. All right, so yeah, okay, then you're 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 in like a matrix-like view of this place. Like you can move in and out like a ghost, if you needed to. As far as your sight's concerned, you can see through things. You can see where everything's outlined. I can also the... see. Invisible creatures and objects for 120 feet. Yeah, there's nothing invisible around here. Yeah. You can make out the cat on a windowsill in the front room. 
Uh, and the spider that's going up the stairs now. Well, I'm going to be going up the right, stairs. So you're, so you're going up the stairs. You jumped off his shoulder. Make a new stealth check as you move location. Alright. Skitter up the stairs. Going up against the banister. Uh, where do you want to go, Bar? I mean, you have free reign here in this area. Well, so, I was wanting to put it in the top shelf in the kitchen, but I'm halfway and I do not want to fall off the thing. So, yeah, that so, would be an uh, athletics check. <laughs> so I am going to uh, go to the next room, see what's in there. It may be, it may not be, you don't know. I don't know. Like <laughs> I mean, already you've assumed it's for tall people. So, you move into the next room. Make uh, I'm going to let you make an investigation check, and I'll tell you all the options you have before you as you're traveling through the bottom layer of this house. I'm going to do a lucky. All right. Nice. Yeah, I'm using yeah. that one. Okay, where shall we begin? There, there's the obvious locations, but at the same time, you don't want to use these spots, like the drawer where you would put spoons, forks, knives, or you know, like okay. any of those low light. Or you could throw it into the oven, but th you don't know if that's even worth doing. Uh, the cabinet might have seemed like he makes breakfast. You have an option of maybe like concealing it somewhere in the pantry. Uh, there's a bin in the uh, dining room where like it looks like there's a bunch of clothing. It's thrown into a hamper of some sort. Uh, it's and it seems like it's clean clothing. Uh, different kinds of cloth that are in this thing. Uh, maybe even like tablecloths are hidden in this thing, and that's a probably a good location. There's a china cabinet in this dining area that you could probably conceal it in one of the back ends of a drawer or something. Uh, there's. Uh, let's see here. There's a trap door in the kitchen that you went over, but it's up to you if you want to investigate it. And then there might be even more options upstairs. How easily seen is this trap door? Well, with your investigation check, you were able to spot it, but it looks like it was definitely meant to be like, like they had a rug over it. It wasn't like it was super concealed, but they throw a rug over it so people wouldn't just be like, oh, there's a trap door. Okay. Uh, well, I have the options downstairs. Why not go upstairs? All right, make me a stealth check as you go up, and I will go into what Ryder is seeing before you get up there. That is a 23. Okay. Let me do that. So, Ryder. <clears throat> and you guys notice the cat's not moving. It must be a fat, lazy cat. But, um... <laughs> Ryder makes it up to the top. There's two bedrooms, and then there's like a closet, a water closet, if you would. And then a hallway then... closet. I'll go into the door that seems to go to like the master bedroom, if that's a, you know, thing. Yeah, yeah, you go straight down the hall for about, like, there's a room to the left, and then there's the water closet, and then there's this main room that's in front of you, and to the right, there's like this hallway closet where you could store things. And then you scurry into the closed door of the master bedroom. And you hear sleeping dwarves in beds. In the bed. Like you walk in. Uh, hear... I'll go into like the wall close to the ceiling and see if is there more than one person. In... Uh, it seems like there's two people there. Ooh. I'm just gonna uh, sit there by the door and watch them to make sure they're not doing anything, not waking up. Then we move back to bar. All right, so I'll head upstairs. You see the hallway. It goes left. There's a room. Beyond that room, there's a water closet to the right. There's a hallway closet, master bedroom, straight ahead. Or bedroom. You don't know if it's master or not, but you assume. I'll put an X on the door with web. I, I, um, okay, okay. You don't know. <laughs> You're on the other side of the door, and all you... 
Okay. okay. On the door inside yeah. or outside? I would outside, I mean, just door so he knows that, hey, don't go out. Alright, so then you make this X, but he doesn't, well, I guess he sees it, yep. Roll yeah. Yeah, I see Roll of many eyes. Interesting item. I know, this thing's amazing, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> what are we doing, Bar? I mean, where do you want to go? How much did it cost? Okay, uh, it's actually not that expensive, it's like 500. Or no, 5,000, sorry. Quit, quit talking shop, or I'm going to make more stealth okay. checks and perceptions. <laughs> so, okay, so, first room, going to go in there. Um, the, uh, the first bedroom you come to, the door is locked. I'm gonna put my ear up to it. Do I hear anything? Mm, yes, you hear some light snoring sound. Okay, so that's one bedroom. There. Uh, see, I don't want to put it in the kitchen because there's really no telling what. There's a hallway closet here. You can make a new investigation check if you want me to give you some hiding ideals. Yeah. You can, so you can go with, like, there's a hallway closet here. You can probably, like, it's got, like, a top shelf that, you know, if you could jump up real quick, you could probably toss it up there on the top of that shelf. Or there's a bunch of boxes and clothing at the bottom that you could easily pull this crate up, put it back there, and then kind of slide it back into place. Might be a little bit noticeable, but not too bad. Uh, could check the water closet to see if there's a way to hide it behind a privy or something. Okay, so... I'm going to look around. Do I see any adhesives? Define adhesives. Sticky stuff. You see the spider web that's on the door that has an X. Uh, tape would be preferred. Or Negative. So. I mean, <laughs> tape is I not a common. Time. They don't make scotch tape here, I'm afraid. Yeah, Sorry. I, 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 I know, but something similar. Would be well, I, mean, I could use my uh, spider yeah. so slowly to you have them up there. You are on the wall. He doesn't know what you're doing. You can't communicate. That's a good point. So he's not saying this out loud unless I need to start making perception checks. No, I'm, I'm not. All right, just checking. All right, so what are we doing? Going to, uh... There's also, like, uh, cabinets in the water closet where, like, there's a small water basin. And then there's, like, a cabinet underneath there with a couple towels. As I was trying okay. to finish up what other hiding spaces you can go after. All right, I'm going to go back downstairs because I really don't want to be doing this up here with... Three perception checks for one instead of one. Make, so, a, make another downstairs. make another stealth check. As you're changing, I you're, you're changing location, so you're going back down the stairs. There's always a chance that you might you might make noise. All right, you're good. Okay, so, so yeah, you creep downstairs. downstairs. You're back in the main room. What do you want to do? I'm going to open up one of the cabinets. And um, um, it's going to be the uh, one. Are we doing the china cabinets the, or the cabinets in the kitchen? Uh, I'll open up the china cabinet. All right, yeah. There's like books that look like uh, portrait books of sorts, like where somebody's made a bunch of drawings kind of stacked in here, but they're kind of like haphazardly. Like, there's a groove actually behind these books that you think you could just drop it there and be done with this. Uh, you know what? Yeah, that yeah. Gonna right. go with that one. <laughs> so you bring it down there. I want you to make me a sleight of hand to kind of like settle it down there without making any noise. Very good, very good, and none the wiser. And now, what do you want to do? Uh, shut the door on the cabinet. And. And do I see a spider going around anywhere? I would be heading probably out after like a minute to, you know, see what's happening and going down. Alright, gonna skip you guys for a minute as you figure out your escape route. Bar, I need, or not Bar, Gideon, I need you to make me another perception check as a little bit of time has finally passed and you're still on watch. Just 
see here. That is not good. No, it is not. That's look out. Ever. Perfect. Great. I don't you know, know what? You didn't bring me as a lookout. Gideon's getting bored. <laughs> like, Gideon's like... Kicking Which is very at, dangerous. Yeah, Gideon's like kicking at the wall or something. I mean, I don't know exactly what Gideon would do, but he is not paying attention to that guard who has made his rounds back towards this location. But you're kind of like in the alleyway, just not paying much mind to the street at the moment. Uh, Bar, what would you like to do? He's going to flavor it. I'm probably just, you know, kicking in a rock or something then. The cat eats Ryder. And then all of a sudden, Ryder turns back into a halfling and the cat dies. The whole house <laughs> wakes up. The whole house wakes up. And then they go down there and no. beat the shit out of Ryder. Ryder, please. Let's not joke. I will actually pull the gun here. <laughs> no fun. Yeah, you put JK, but <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm going to take you at full value. Let's not joke about this, all right? So. I mean, killing the cat would have been my first priority, though. It's like, let's not leave that. Well, the cat no, hasn't woken up. All right, now you're your own characters. You have an old way to talk to each other, yeah. so get out of this house. Okay, so I'm going to be pointing at the door. <laughs> okay, as you see the spider like do a little dance and go towards the door. I need and you I'm to make going a... to open up the door and walk out. Right. So I need from you as you're changing locations. Both of you make stealth checks. Twenty-six and a thirty-four. Yeah, the cat is fast asleep. He must have had a good meal before he went to bed. And the two of you managed to get outside of the house, and you're slowly closing that door back to where you found it. Uh, I assume you might be like resetting the lock either with thieves' yes. tools. I will let you go. Ahead. Like I would assume you would have to do this with thieves' tools because there's no idea if you could just lock it from the inside. So go ahead and roll me thieves' tools. Easily done. I'll be, I'll be climbing on the bar and like hiding in a pocket or something. All right, so you will no no longer be needing to make any stealth checks unless you jump out of his pocket. Uh, yeah. Bar, you're in the backyard of this building. Uh, make a perception check as you're kind of ducking around the other edge of this location to see if you got a clear getaway. Oh, that's real funny. You look and you're about ready to go back into the alleyway and you can see Gideon just kind of like spacing off doing his own thing and then there's a guard literally walking right past him going up the street and you almost jumped out but you stopped before you did and Gideon just did not even hear the clomping of metal feet hitting the ground you like caught all that and you're like Gideon why <laughs> but yeah uh, Gideon's over there in his own little world doing whatever Gideon's doing and you wait. And you slowly make your way out. Uh, let me get another stealth check as you're making your way back over. Easily enough. I don't need... Like, the only way I can beat that is if I roll crit. So let's just see. 35. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, no crits here. Anyway, so you dart across the street. Then all of a sudden, you have the ability to sneak up on Gideon if you wanted to. He's just unaware of you. Place me on the shoulder. Uh, no, I don't want you to die. <laughs> I'm going to just walk up to him and put my hand on his shoulder. Good job. The job is done. So you feel this hand touch your shoulder, and the first thing you hear is, good job. Yay, no noise. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Gideon's, you hear Bar's voice make it out and everything. Job's done, we can go. And you guys are free to go back to the inn. You have managed to stealth your way and plant the evidence from what you could tell. This should go off without a hitch. And we'll say for the sake of time, you make it back to the inn. You're able to lay down and think about what you did and then slowly get into a long rest. And we will end the session there unless there's anything you want to get cleared up before we head out for a week. Because we're looking at... Three Not really. Days. Yeah. Good job, guys. You managed to do all those checks. Pass without a trace is OP, especially in stealth like missions. So that's especially always. With the rogues. Oh, yeah. Rogues, like, I could disappear from the campaign if I went with this, you know, and I'll be wherever I want to be, you know. It's awesome. 
And you Rogues have... and spiders, and man. That cat could not pick up on any of you, and it had advantage on smelling you out. <laughs> so, congrats. But yeah, pass without a trace. Very OP spell if you go with a roguelike mission. So having a druid in the party proves useful. So we will pick up on this next week as we return to the inn, pick up our bandits, head back home, and see about setting up that lovely fight pit. And then you can join us again next week, 7 p.m. Central. Uh, Gideon still wants to get Visitor Scythe. Oh, never mind. I guess we're going north still. My my bad. Don't let me don't let me misspeak. So yeah, it looks like we have intentions to go north to talk to the Arcana and see about getting a scythe back for Visitor. And the Rose Monarch. Oh, well, actually, has been... I need to talk to Azilia. And it's still up in the air on whether or not they're going to be there. So we'll I'll do some role calculations. Resolve some events. I mean, it's been about a week. She wasn't going to stay there permanently, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'll get the re I'll get the results of that figured out before next session. But yeah, uh, didn't think it was going to be worth like making a house for you guys to crawl through, especially when there's only two of you who's who's going to be going through it. So I hope you didn't mind the theater to mine, but that was that was good. Good stealth checks. Good everything. Join us again next week as we head to the Arcana to see if we can help Fizzer in some way. And then slowly figure about getting our fight pit together. We'll see if that happens. And then join us Sunday at 12 p.m. Central as we continue our adventures in the Timorian Kingdom. Uh, and we deal with our new uh, friend who is joining the party. And hopefully we'll get to get to some Jubilee holiday-like nature stuff coming up. So look forward to that. Uh, so every Sunday and Wednesday we have D&D sessions. Uh, there might be some chances for me to do some other streaming throughout the week, though I don't have a schedule for that, so don't hold me to it. But uh, other than that, feel free to go ahead and say goodnight to the archives, goodnight to those who currently tuned in to watch us. Goodnight, Twitch. Bye, Good night. everybody. Goodnight to the archives. Yep. And with that, do you hear the calling? If not, you have not yet met Minerva. <laughs> <laughs>